me that coming back with uh with Haywo and Vince who are just like heavy hitters who can fill a room and fill a stream all by themselves probably right. shouldn't have gone with them with the ring rust like i like in my <laughs> mind i was like come back in a big way grab like the biggest guns i got you know and i mean yeah they're 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 definitely strong and vince thinks he came on pretty strong from the fact that he was dealing with other stresses but uh, I, sometimes you need to come back because what that did is that set your bar higher than maybe where you thought you'd be so being slightly behind that means you're probably still ahead of where you want to be so there's nothing wrong with that you know that's actually not a not a terrible way to look at it like it, it wasn't like okay i could have eased into it with like a, you know like it you know uh with a you know something more low-key one of my chicanery streams or something like that but then i wanted mm -hmm. to have felt that like chase right where like i'm chasing, oh yeah you know where you you're sort of chasing to catch back up or you're chasing to get like back in the zone and stuff and i had somebody um you know because it is meftober i had somebody stop by like my soma stream which i started this week which is like the feature game for the year this is the game i've been looking mm, for oh, soma's so good oh. you, you played through it before i assume right no i got to basically mm. exactly where i am right now uh, okay like last year or the year before and i'm like this would be the perfect game to play uh for meftober you know for spooky yeah game. and uh, so i stopped playing but um I can. I don't know what's going on in the game, but I'm familiar with the philosophy that there. You, you know what Soma stands for, I assume, and all that. Well, Soma is, a, as I recall, is a is a, 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 a like somna like sleep, right? Or am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I think there's like there's a there's, there's a goddess named meeting. Soma uh, in uh, yeah in Hindi. I think it's Hindi, right? But since uh, you have not finished it, I'm shutting my mouth because. It's a trip. I love it. I love it. Well, so uh, some of the philosophy that there that I don't think is in the in the it's in the subtext. It's not in the text yet. It's something, right. it's something called the continuity of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so, like, um, if you can imagine uh, for a moment that, like, we have the technology, OK, and resources, everything we need, we can perfectly scan your brain and copy it onto a disk or a chip. Yep. Okay, it is exactly you. Every thought, every experience, everything. Um, many scientists, even, uh, you have like a few, I can't remember the name of, but there's actually a scientist who is like famously a, uh, what is it, a, a, not atheist, a, a deist. Very famously a okay. deist, very into like neuroscience. Okay, so like mm -hmm. doesn't quite believe in a god, but they're, you know, blah. Um, a mm -hmm. step further than me as an agnostic. Like, um, you know, okay, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you've got atheism, agnosticism, and then you have, like, right. deism, right? Which is, like, right. so, um, a deist who, 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 you know, where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck there is, that agnostic. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a deist there's, is like, there's something, you know, and, like, we think it's God. too much coincidence to be nothing, but I don't know if it's this. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. So, yeah. very famously, a deist, and they, they did a lot of, like, neuroscience, and they basically asserted, and I'm sure if you do Google, like, if there's a soul that lives in the brain, uh, was kind mm -hmm. of their assertion. Because, you know, right. anytime we have an understanding of a concept, science wants to observe it. Now, mm -hmm. one thing I try to, like, remind folks, I'm very, I'm rather skeptical, I'm rather scientific leaning and minded uh but mm -hmm. i have like my woo wee woo obsession some of it's just for oh, my yeah, own yeah, amusement yeah. some of it's uh w one of my favorite lines is like i don't believe in ghosts but i'm afraid of them i think that perfectly encapsulates <laughs> me you know like you know like i would go on a on a ghost hunter's trip and like get freaked out a little bit but no it's mm -hmm. kind of part of the part it's of like what ghosts you... ghosts don't exist but we're in a thin period where ghosts can show themselves if they <laughs> want to it's just like <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know yeah yeah, yeah like right. you can you can let those mesh. It's fine. <laughs> right, right. So there's, um, you know, there's a there's pseudoscience and fringe science and, you know, a lot of stuff like yeah. that. But I try to remind people that science isn't a belief. It is a system. It is a methodology. Um, having mm -hmm. a belief in science is like deifying science. You know, like right, which you're, you're, defeats you're... defeats science in a way. Like right, like belief belief is supposed to be I I believe because I believe. Yeah, Whereas science believe is supposed have. to be like yeah. And science is supposed to be, are you sure? And science is supposed to go, let's check. Right. Yes. Yeah. Belief is something you take for granted. Belief is sort of a default or a de facto. Now, we all have implicit and explicit biases. Uh, 
to varying Absolutely. degrees. Every single yeah. one. Uh, and the point of, like, a lot of science is trying to essentially screen for bias, remove them from mm-hmm. the equation so that you can make, you know, sort of better observations and record and gain better data. So, so we no longer have medicine that's about the size and shape of people's skulls determining factors of who they are. <laughs> right, right. And, and, <laughs> just yeah, just yeah. throw that stupid yeah, humor, humor thing out there. Yeah, humors are gone, right? Like, when, oh, oh yeah, the yeah. smells, uh, you know. But, but there was a methodology to... You gotta keep in mind, like, the original medical scientists were fucking grave robbers. They were the OG necromancers, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Like, they were viewed as creepy and weird and, like, if you can <laughs> cast your mind back. Uh, but yeah, so so um, it's, it's a neuroscientist, and anytime something comes along in science, we go like, "What is this?" So yeah. we didn't. If you can imagine, there's a point in human history where we didn't have a definition for for biological life. We just hadn't really thought about it. We kind of again, you take it for granted, just like oxygen, yeah. just like you know, you go into like the Greco uh, Roman sort of like elements are, you know earth wind fire or whatever and then they develop mm-hmm. it into the periodic table of elements and you know we it this stuff is like this so right now we're at a period right. of neuroscience um and this is relevant because i'm like very fascinated with the mind always have been mind philosophy mm-hmm. you know i think the mind is where we live and there is a correlation there that i i enjoy that if there is a soul it's somewhere in the mind you know like it's somewhere in your brain chemistry you know collo- it could be colloquially speaking a mind mm-hmm. or a soul. It doesn't need to be like a magic thing that I can pull from you and use to resurrect my skeletons. Okay. Like it can just be, <laughs> you know, what is that thing where we can biologically look at a, a person? We can go, these are these predictive factors of your genome. This is the, the stimulus we can put you in an environment and try to mm-hmm. make you who we want you to be. And there's that 1% where you just aren't that or whatever right then Mm -hmm, call them mm -hmm. whatever the fuck you want call it chance and some people are like that's the soul fine okay cool so yeah so so i i've established sort of like the parameters of what i mean by soul okay for the purposes of where i'm going with this um so neuroscience is sort of you know we can perfectly replicate your mind so so we can make a 100% carbon copy. Now, they did a study recently where they essentially engineered a chemical. I don't know if you've heard about this one. Mm-mm. Uh, Mm-mm. You, uh, They had their, the subjects, like, sort of, uh, it essentially coached the brain. Um, it allowed you to, like, connect and, and talk, uh, think and, and your neurochemicals to pass. It just wouldn't let you write new memories. Okay? Oh. Uh, so essentially, like, coach the brain. It, it stopped you from writing new memories. Interesting. They, so they would ask scary as heck too. <laughs> yeah. So they would ask subjects <laughs> subjects questions um, whilst whilst they had this like in, had ingested this 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 slurry, right? And they mm-hmm. would ask subjects questions. Or maybe they they subdermally like you know, like or maybe yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Get... However they got it in there, maybe it was in the spine or whatever. Uh, it was an ingestion. So um, they get this chemical in them, and uh, they'd ask them questions, and you know like you know what's your name, what's your blah, and a lot of the stuff is sort of like the intrinsic memory nail it and then they'd start asking them like the sort of deeper questions were uh, the recall memory right uh Mm -hmm. so like you know when you were eight you know you know and like they'd ask them a life experience question they would recall it and then when they would go to ask them the question again a little bit later on come back around to that same question they wouldn't be able to recall it at all essentially what was discovered uh, or hyp- the hypothesis they were after is that each time you tap into sort of like a root memory, you rewrite mm-hmm. it. And yeah, so, go, I, I, go see, I've always been underneath the 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 loose belief. Like I said, it's just something like I, it kind of made sense. I mean, it's one study. I, I yeah, it yeah, yeah, it's one study. Yeah, right? so, so. Well, I, I just meant with the memory thing that every time, yeah, like it's like you don't recall. You don't actually recall the memory. You recall the memory of the last time you remembered that memory, mm-hmm. which ties into that. Yeah, that, that's I've heard. I can't remember. That was probably 10 years ago. But like, I've always like, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because then you start forgetting it. And that's why stories grow and, and change. And they change. And like, well, they were wearing a yeah. blue shirt and it, you'll pass a lie detector test because you yeah, you'll, you believe it. Yeah. Yeah. You recall 100 percent. And so it's essentially it, it ties into that every time you every time you recount a memory, you change it. And what mm-hmm. they found out is essentially like you sort of rewrite it um in your synapses mm-hmm. and stuff like that so you actually like rewrite the memory each time you recall it which to me is a little terrifying actually it's like so everything i know is wrong we're Every all memory... bards and 
Yeah. We're all bards and sociopaths at the same time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're all we're all lying and changing our stories. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing, you know, like I embellish stories too for like entertainment. Yeah. You yeah. Know. yeah. Uh, but like there's a difference between like the recall of it, you know, and now I'm like looking at like I've got like stab wounds from the time my mom stabbed me, you know, with a paring knife and shit. I just recalled it. Oh no! Ah, something yeah. changed. Uh, no, it's like <laughs> it's like in my memory she's cooking macaroni and cheese. You know, I say some shit. She sta- She just reaches over and goes like this, and I'm like, I bet you she wasn't cooking macaroni and cheese. That's just like the thing I rewrote into the memory. Let's it, it's or whatever. It, it, I said that not that specific memory, just like that. Like this concept's really interesting because. Recently, I mean, I, I know you saw. Like, I fell back into Warhammer Fantasy Battles Eighth Edition because I have a local group. We no love, we enjoy it. Detected, yeah. Yeah, but I was like, you know, let me get my high elves back out, like my first love. Let's set it out, laid them all out, and I knew I had a ton. Mm-hmm. And yet, for some reason, like, let me build a list. And every time I built a list, it, it became: were these armies this small? Hmm. Were these armies smaller than Sigmar armies? And some some circumstances and actually quite a few that i've realized and like yeah, it's a whole thing because every time i remember those memories because they were all happy memories i made those armies bigger and bigger and grander because that's also with the stories that i read and it just kind of meshed together and it blended it and like they layered on top of each other until a point where i had my whole ten thousand points out i'm like is this two thousand points anymore and it's like yes no this is more than anything ever <laughs> and you can never run everything you want in your list you're never going to see Tyrion and Teclas in a list because it just doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it's against the rules. I'm like, oh, yeah, dang. Yeah, no, it's 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 interesting because, like, my friend Sam was here, and he's, he's my oldest friend in the world. And, you know, my mom's dead. My dad didn't raise me. So, like, I don't have a whole lot of people I can verify my memories with. Right. And um, there's not a lot of photos of me because I moved around a lot. I was raised by other people. who I wasn't their kid, so they didn't really, like, photograph me much. I start to have these like anxiety attacks where I'm like, do I even fucking exist? And mm. and part of that is my you know bipolar uh, disorder, which I was recently diagnosed with. But I think unconsciously I knew it was there. I've always talked about depression and you know. Yeah. But uh, so the diagnosis came through, and there's there is some there is some uh, derealization. It's called in. Uh, specifically when it comes to like depression and and bipolar there is some derealization uh that comes along with that uh which is the feeling that you're not real or that you're in the matrix or that you're in uh, outer space Mm. looking down and watching yourself on earth but you're you're in space and you're floating away from your body um you know it's there is that's part of my condition and so when that like sort of harmonizes with like that self-doubt that that existential dread I can get really fucked in my head. Um, and like see that all these memories that aren't me, all these, I'm, I'm going to put the bow on this. I promise. Um, <laughs> and so I, I was like verifying with Sam and I'm like, Oh God, I swore I made that up, you know? And he's like, no, no, no that. And I'm like, it's real. Happen. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, thanks. Cause like, you've basically become my anchor. You have just enough like corroboration with some of these, these things that I, I remember, but I'm starting to like, view is unreliable and stuff like that and i'm like thank you like because i you know I'm, i'd be spiraling away in this this year where i've been trying to sort of go back to my factory settings remember who i mm-hmm. am and and before the diagnosis trying to know that i am equal parts yes i am you know my brain chemistry my genetics like adhd and bipolar are both uh, they're both genetic they're both mm-hmm. you have the the marker in your dna for that one or for those ones right so it's harder no actually can you still have those even if they're not genetic can you develop those not like just you you can develop curious depression you can develop anxiety disorder um Mm -hmm. but there's still likely a predisposition okay okay i I wasn't quite sure it's like my wife she had issues with depression but she's gone past them like okay Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, I just didn't know. I just want to. I was curious because I but, haven't looked into it too much. But uh, bipolar and and ADHD are uh, so it's like sort of like light. Do you have the marker? Do you have a light predisposition? Strong deep uh, disposition? ADHD is is like if you got it, you got it. Like um, okay, a, yeah. ADHD, you have 
pretty much at birth your your brain chemistry it's just, there's like four regions of your brain that sort of handle dopamine those four mm-hmm. regions are all just wired differently like sort of right. physically okay and if you can imagine like your, your your heart you have four chambers on your heart mm-hmm. just, just imagine them like being mixed around and like the tubes going in and out the wrong way Ooh. okay that's a terrible metaphor that is not right. what adhd <laughs> is but this is but it's, right, right, right. uh you're but it's a physical change in the brain okay it's yeah. how we manage uh, how adhd how most neurodiversity manages specifically dopamine is mm-hmm. just it's just different it's atypical yeah yeah the um I, I have one very good friend he has adhd and like he knows it and it's it's you know you could communicate with them like it you, you see where he goes but like he's learned to harness it so I, okay i was just i said that's just the facts i didn't really know like so like whenever i'm you know thinking about it or, or talking about it i just a little more education is always good so i appreciate that yeah yeah so like um like with stimulant medication so one of my buddies so i I've, I've had 36 years of maladaptive behaviors with adhd the show is called Rantcast, folks i don't know how we missed this um <laughs> like um I have like 36 years of maladaptive behaviors. I have some good behaviors too, like some adaptive behaviors for my ADHD. Like um, Mm -hmm. uh, if you've ever seen me uh, when Molly tells me to do something, uh, I'll do like this, like this weird dance thing where I'm like, I'm dancing and I'm pointing to the regions of the house where it is. It's an adaptive behavior I've learned to, and I've always done it. And it's part of my quirky personality and I'm a weirdo. Right. But But it's how you cement the memory to make sure you remember to do it. Yeah. I give it a physical component and then, yeah. Uh, so I like, you know, that's one of them, you know, but there's no amount of medication I can take to, I have three alarms on my phone set to go live for, for, uh, for a stream. There is no amount of medication I can take to remember that I set those alarms and realize mm-hmm. that I turned it off absentmindedly mm-hmm. and just like kind of ignored it. It's just, it's just finding your brain's way of remembering it at, at some point. Right. Right. If you if you can, you might not, and it's just like, hey, whatever. Sometimes Brandcast will be fifteen minutes late, but you know it's going to go on for quite a while, no right. matter what time it right. starts. Right, the anticipation. <laughs> right. Uh, so Hotspur, real quick, uh, dropped in with a tier one uh, sub for twenty nine years. Thank you so wow. much. Wow. But also months, dr- months, years. So, twenty nine months. No, it's twenty nine years. Twenty nine years. Yeah, time oh, moves differently in in my uh, <laughs> in my demi plane. Did you ever know that? Okay. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, like it moves different here in the uh, the necro dimension. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> and then <laughs> Hotspur also dropped twenty dollars for uh, to write love on her arms, which is a charity I'm I'm fundraising nice. for this month, this whole uh, spooky season. Uh, this is the sixth annual Meftober, but this is the first year I have done a charity component with it, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Let's uh, we want to wrap a bow here on this uh, on this tangent within a tangent within a tangent here before i go insane <laughs> uh because i'll my brain will know that i didn't finish the story and it, and it just and the anxiety will come it's it's a hell of a thing uh so so anyway like the you know we kind of reset like i um had these moments where i'm like oh mm-hmm. you know am i real uh hang, hang out with my friend sam uh read into some neuroscience and neuroscience itself is like the sort of like hard science like it's really interesting because, and I'll get probably get more into this with uh, Dr. Alex Alex uh, Milonis when he's on next week, uh, who is a clinical psychologist. Mm-hmm. Essentially, like psychology is a lot of observational, right? Like soft science. But what's very interesting is a lot of the observations and hypotheses and theories from psychology are being backed up by neuroscience. Like mm, basically, nice. they're not like necessarily at odds. Uh, you know. They're like, oh no, actually, like yeah, depression is kind of like that, and and then they're like, look at the brain chemistry and the and the and the neurotransmitters and signals and stuff. So bipolar depression, uh, for instance, that one onsets typically around puberty and in your twenties, and you've got the genetic marker for it. And if you're born to have it, it's you're, you're basically gonna get it. It doesn't mean that if your parents are bipolar, you will, but it's like mm-hmm. it's like most of our genetic traits you know they're going to xy down the chromosome you're going to heterozygous homozygous right and you're going to go down the thing and and mm-hmm. and uh, it's more complex than what you did in high school biology but that's the gist of it and bipolar uh, has a has a strong component adhd has a very strong component chances are if you're adhd you should be looking all the way up your family tree mm. uh, one of your parents probably gave it to, like one of your parents most certainly gave it to you so which of your parents has it 
you know, or both. Right. And yeah. I say, and, and if you have friends or family that don't, or I guess friends, most likely since it's genetic, you don't have a, the ADHD chances are they might know like, yeah, you're much more like your mother or your father based upon your mannerisms and how, how you think and thought. So like, in the, even if you can't see it, someone close to you can easily help you get through there. And then, yeah, you know, yeah. it can be like, Oh, interesting. And it's like, it doesn't make you, Bad or worse, it just makes it interesting. Like, so, okay. so, so I'm going to take my first, uh, t like, different tangent for later on note here <laughs> of the show, which is um, something I want to come back to is uh, ADHD is genetic, mm -hmm. which means it's been essentially selected by biology as a trait to stick around. And I'll get back to, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, so a lot of the things about us are useful. And again, remember, ADHD neurodiversity is a, is Physically, you are different, essentially. Like, your, mm -hmm. your, your neurochemicals, your wiring, your, you know, however you want to express it, is different. Um, it's like being short or tall, brown or blue eyes. Like, your, your brain is different. Okay? Yeah. Hence neurodiversity. Um, so, so we'll come back to that in a second and finish up this memory thing. Um, so we did this cool study where, where we're like, okay, like, basically each time you go to, like, write a memory, uh, you change it. And it's mm -hmm. backed up in a number of ways, and, and uh, so on and so forth. So now, pretend we've advanced society. We have perfect technology to where we can exactly replicate your mind, as it is when you go into that booth, like in Soma. In Soma, yep. Okay? Perfectly copy your mind. So something interesting is going to happen. Your point of view as the person in the machine, in all likelihood probably isn't transferring to that microchip and if they put that on a computer or say like in an android body mm -hmm. your consciousness the continuity of consciousness as they call it you are not likely to experience from point a to clone or point b <laughs> essentially because it, part of and this is more Mephisto talking, and there is something called the continuity of consciousness. I'm not even smart enough to begin to like unpack it in a cold open. Um, essentially, like you've created a new, you have created a copy of yourself, but it's a new entity. Um, right. As soon as the the very first moment of existence, you're already looking at something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, you could be looking at. A exact copy of yourself that's immediately two different people because your perspective is immediately something else like it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter what it is I, you could be looking less than a millimeter to the left of the same yep. view of something it's like no it's all of a sudden something different so then the right. all of your electrons start going different directions you think about different things and like within that one second you like i you get a copy of myself one's looking left one's looking right like one of them could be like i'm thinking about my wife the other one's going i want to go like lift it's just because it's probably going to tend towards what my brain does but it's going to but go but wherever it wants everything <laughs> you do isn't necessarily a guarantee it's kind of like you have a chance of doing any any of the like things that you're you know predisposed yeah yeah whatever's always up here anyway yeah, you, yeah that stuff's always rattling around i'm as likely to like get grab another sip of my water as i am to like uh, close this tangent off okay i'm way more likely yeah. to grab another sip of my water than to close <laughs> the tangent off but but the point is, is like all those little pro proclivities you have all those impulses that we keep in check all those learned behaviors the so on and so forth those are all like i believe that they're not certainties in the moment like i i'm not going to get into like free will or not but i think that it's it's like it's like rolling dice it's i play lots of games of chance i think we're essentially you know your brain's kind of like you're doing so many different things and just something as simple as like being at a quarter of an angle different looking at something to where I don't see the flash of light over here and get distracted mm -hmm. versus my clone self sitting at the angle that can see it and get distracted can start our trajectory of our brains going in completely different paths. Like, All right. So tie that into what we understand about each time you have a memory, you rewrite it. Mm -hmm. So you now have these two different people that can essentially, uh, that will be on divergent paths. So it comes back to Soma. What's the character's name? Adam or whatever. Yeah, yeah I can't remember his name. It's been years. Let's call him Adam just for simplicity's We'll call him Adam, sake. okay, just for simplicity's sake. So main character of Soma, colloquially, we're referring to him as Adam. Adam gets brain exactly copied 
the last memory Adam has on the going on the chip is the visor coming down, the scan, and then the visor goes up and is in a completely different world. Yep. Adam A likely got out that chair and went on to like live and experience their life. He got got 200 bucks for this study. Yep, 200 bucks <laughs> like, for this study. Like not even concerned about it. They yeah. said they uh the the hope was that they could extend Adam's life from the months he had left from the brain bleeds to years, right? So maybe mm-hmm. best case scenario Adam gets to live out 18 more years as a relatively functional life and then um the apocalypse happens. <laughs> yeah. And you have all these consciousnesses sitting on microchips all over the place. Now I don't know where the game goes, but I understand what the continuity of consciousness is and I have right. some supposition or I have some some pre- presupposed thoughts on that. And the thing that I find fascinating is the game is sort of like exploring that. Mm-hmm. So like you're not Adam in Soma. You're Adam B. That doesn't mean that you are not conscious, that you are not a living being or whatever, because if you have consciousness and you have, and this is one of the things in neuroscience, we are, we want to know just like, what is life? Okay. So is a cork alive? Is a, well, yeah, obviously humans are alive, you know, and we, we didn't have that like definition to know like plants are alive and humans are alive and, and even then we have like, we split hairs over like, well, types of life, organic life. And we didn't yeah. have that always. And then brain function life. Non-brain brain life. function, yeah. higher brain yeah. function, emotional life. Intelligence. Yeah, yeah intelligence. you get weird. You get weird yeah. at that point, yeah. Yeah, right. We didn't have all that stuff. And we've slowly, slowly, slowly developed that over time. And right now what neuros- some neuroscientists are asking is what is consciousness, right? Is a dog conscious? We like to, you know, is a cow conscious? What does that, you know, what does that mean? What do mm-hmm. we mean when we ask this question? Philo- philosophically, we have some things we believe, but like, what's science observe? You know, mm-hmm. and uh, and I find that question utterly fascinating. But now I'm going to make sure that whoever is listening to this uh, doesn't have a peaceful night's rest. <laughs> so when you go to bed, I know where, I know where, I know where you're going. <laughs> so when you go to bed tonight. You break your continuity of consciousness when you fall asleep. Do you wake up a different person tomorrow? Does Andrew or Mephisto A cease to exist when the lights finally go out and the darkness takes me into my peaceful slumber? And I wake back up and now I am awake in my same body. But am I the same me that went to bed? I've broken that continuity. How could I possibly know? It would be like waking up on a microchip. It would almost be indiscernible to me. I wouldn't know until I meet Andrew A. That you're actually Andrew B. Yeah. Well, hey, thankfully, uh, we all have friends and family that even if we're a B or a C or a D, we can at least stay that Andrew. You know well, what I mean? And see, and that's... And like, that... that's, that's which becomes the collective consciousness of humanity, which is then a whole nother thing. And that probably leans right now much more into belief than science, because yeah. how, the, how the heck do you even figure that one out? Well, well, Jung wasn't a complete quack, um, and like Siegfried wasn't a complete quack. They had some good ideas. Um, yeah, they just but they you know, again, <laughs> again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like I love uh, Alan Wake and Control. Those lean very heavily mm. into not mm. the Jungian archetype stuff, but a lot of collective unconsciousness. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't want to go into like the the esoterica of that, but I do believe in a very humans are social creatures type of yeah. consciousness, or like a sort of uh, like ask and verify to like the human yeah. reality that we exist in a sort of collective reality. That right. your memories may be imperfect and your uh, experience may have breaks in continuity. But because you got the boys, you got your homies, you got your community, you've got your, 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 your spouse, your significant others, your family. Just like my story that started this when I checked with my friend Sam, hey, did that really happen? Maybe the details were wrong. But Sam went, yeah, mm-hmm. that happened. Like it yep. is through those relationships with people that we sort of 
I guess, verify. Like, maybe I am Andrew B. right now, or C. or D. or how many times have I broke my continuity of consciousness? But what matters is my existence is valid, mm -hmm. and I'm here experiencing it, sharing the reality with other folks that are sharing it too. And even if you are all constructs of my fantastic mind, you're real <laughs> to me. And that's what matters. Yep. So. yep. And I enjoy my time when I don't see you, and I enjoy my time when I see you. So your brain is enough to keep me going whether I'm on this stream or not. So There you go. There you go. It's so <laughs> it's so I am so big brain dead that even you when we don't so see each big. other, like your your like existence is full and three dimensional. <laughs> like, you, you, you thought Nagosh was just a bit, everybody. No, <laughs> it's real. Yeah, it's no, real. Yeah, it's real. Oh uh, yeah. So uh there you go. How's that for a cold open, yeah. everybody? I am, of course. That's, I was going to say, I, th I thought we were going to get into Lumineth because Iliatha has clones. I thought that's where this was leading. We're, 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 not, we're done with the cold open? I thought we were going to go right back into Sigmar. Oh, we, we gotta, we'll just say who we are, and then we can go right back into Sigmar. <laughs> but I am, of course, the magical Mr. Mephisto, the most dangerous man in Age of Sigmar, your loquacious lich, taking you on journeys through all the adjacencies in Warhammer's best podcast, not about Warhammer. This is, of course, AOS Rantcast. This is Season 4, Episode 2, and I am joined tonight by the Chuck Moore, Mr. Strength Hammer himself. How's it going, my friend? As, uh, you know, it's going really well, and, and I, I'm going to add another title to uh, to this here, just because I've seen lots of uh, uh, different people. Usually it's, it's, these, it's these people, uh, part of the tough crowd out there and, and and god bless them they're fun they're enjoyable on twitter and i've got to meet a decent amount of them i hope to meet more in my in my times and travels with warhammer but uh they're doing this whole they're cosplaying as witch elves and wrathy and i said i just want them all to remember that okay i was the first one in the age of sigmar community to cosplay marathi and i'm still as far as i'm concerned not concerned as far as i know and i've looked i'm the only award winning marathi cosplay on this planet See, so when well, you guys are doing your belt thing about who's the best daughters of cane player it's me and it doesn't mean I, I don't have to win to prove that all right I, that's i'm on retirement mode i'm just i just need to put models on the table and boom i i'm, I'm the best You're winning that's... every time winning every <laughs> time you put models down yeah as long as i can roll one craith roll get that one four up that's all i need <laughs> <laughs> uh you know it's it's fantastic. So you're you're kind of back to our continuity of consciousness. You're yeah. you're Marathi Prime. You're you're Marathi Prime. Yeah. It's 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 definitely but, odd because it, actually this is like a weird. That's not about tangents. It's just a weird thought because, like, I play Daughters of Cain, which is a female matriarch army and all that sort of stuff, which is fun. I absolutely love it, and it's it's fun to to be a part of it. But I've you know I've attached myself to that army as much as I think possible, mm -hmm. but it's still, it's, it, you know, I, I do get a little bit like twinges of jealous when I see people like, you know, like, Oh, people are like in 40 K like I'm a space wolf. So they get like art done of themselves. as like, you know, as a space wolf and like, they can attach that way. It's like, I can't really get myself drawn as a daughter of Cain because that, of course you can. it's not my identity. Well, I mean, I could, it's not my identity and it's like, that wouldn't really tie me to it in a different way. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like mentally it's like, no, that's, that's not, me it's just i have a different. very fond memory of you in high heels and a crown well it's so. like that 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 that's 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 the cosplay and that that was fun and that was great but like like it, it there's a certain level because since i clearly identify as a male with my beard and <laughs> everything that i do you, you don't but like, like i can't appropriate that sort of experience that's valid for others but not necessarily for yourself is that where you're going yeah 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 and it's just it, yeah in, in a Part, that's, that's probably like a good part of it the other part is just very much like even if like i did made art of myself as the daughter's cane like it i wouldn't see it as me hmm. I, I just I just my 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 being and my personality and where i'm at uh, with identity it's like wouldn't wouldn't connect those and so it's like no that's just see I'm, I'm a little different <laughs> chat king if you want to draw gender bender uh mephisto fan art go ahead it's fine oh i mean I'll, I'll say, you guys can't you can't, I, I, I'll be appreciative. And it's like you have time of your life. You can do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> live and let live. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, it's just like that that thing. It's just like you know, the closest I have is a, a, a Stone Monk gamer from uh, back when he was part of the Mortal Realms podcast. He did my he's Tayrathi, still, still, which was he's not on he the still... podcast, but he's still part of that crew. That group. They're, oh, they're still good, friends. Good. I just ran a Soulbound game. Sorry, I uh, cheated on the best damn Soulbound party. 
And uh, <laughs> it was the best damn Mortal Realm show or something like that is what we called it. There you and go. I, uh, I ran an adventure I have wanted to run since Soulbound came out. Ooh, okay. okay. I have. Uh, and uh, as soon as Aaron gets it, like, edited and and i think he's gonna release it in multiple parts because we just marathon that fucking game one sat one <laughs> s- sunday like noon to like 2 a.m something like old school Damn. Like, you know um, yeah there was tangents in kids were in and out of there because i brought my son down sure, or, um yeah. you know we ate dinner we talked you know but it was like that w- that's how i grew up gaming yeah it's yeah like, yeah you would go like weekdays you would go over to a homie's house talk about the game make characters like maybe run a little like what we called hook line and sinker just like really short like two hour adventures mm-hmm. like every night and but then the weekends it was just you as soon as you crawled out of bed because you'd been up all night playing fucking video games it was yep. you you'd meet up at the guy's house shoot the shit for two hours and then just game until the sun came up and that is yep. and so we did that and uh aaron and eric were both there and i used to confuse them until I met Eric and he said, I'm Eric with an IC because I care. And now I know it forever <laughs> and I will never forget which one's which. But yeah, Stone Monk, Eric, uh, Eric was there. Yeah. And uh, and so so he's there. They're still in there. It's just um, I think it happens to all of us. We go through our the wheel turns where you just you you, oh, you yeah. Warhammer less, you know, you, other stuff. Whatever. happens. Yeah, is- yeah go ahead. I mean, for sure, like uh, I wouldn't say I, I, I'm war gaming and I went it's weird. Like my I still Warhammer, but like, you know, if you've been following my social media stuff, it's like, OK, well, Chuck's painting Horus Heresy right now. He's also uh, painting Warhammer Ancients. He's playing more time like I'm playing AOS less. And part of that's because this edition is currently not my most favorite. It's still a great game. And I want to be very I always have to be very clear on that. I love people don't get upset. It's like Age of Sigmar right now 3.0 is a great game. Very well balanced. People enjoy it. Yeah. Doesn't jive with me as far as AOS 2 did. I couldn't get enough AOS 2. AOS 3, I play it for fun and I enjoy it. But like 2, like I was ravenous for games. I'm feeling a similar disharmony and I kind of have been. Um but mm-hmm. it's hard for me to tell if it's the game or if it's it's all the crap going on in my life. You know? Oh I mean, yeah, and that's I do enjoy that about any part of the wargaming community that I've been a part of. If someone's like, I just don't have it in me to play right now, like life's just like everyone. As soon as you say I have life stuff, I have never heard anyone do like the whole like, oh, come on, man. Like, you know, you hear that in the other peer pressure, things, like, like, oh, come on, dude, yeah. it's just a game like uh, pass. You pass kicker. Go on. Yep. Good job, kicker. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've I, every time I say someone's just like I life's in the way. It's like, oh, do you need any help? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're here whenever you you're you're good. Don't worry about it. And it's I, like cool. The like, reason to that is a... I will do rant cast long after I've quit playing Warhammer. Like we'll be like ten years from now. I'll like quit playing. I'll have like a spontaneous. I'll start like fostering kids or something like that. something like big in life uh, that just like I just simply can't play Warhammer anymore. I will still mm-hmm. be running rant cast because for me it has always been about the community. And uh, it's back to us as social creatures. Yeah. It's and, like, and I. Uh, sorry. And, as I'm ingratiating myself with the RPG community, as I'm uh, ambitiously finally running the horror podcast, I think I'm equipped to to make a once a month <laughs> pre-recorded, like how I, I used to be on a mm-hmm. podcast uh, called the Technophiles uh, Podcast Network. Um, this is That was my first like toe into podcast. Those, I like to every now and then share them from YouTube just to be like, look, Beth, when I, I'm not bullshitting when i say i was in games journalism how long i've done this shit like everybody make again it's the memory and it's unreliable stuff i'm right, like no, right. no 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 here's visible here's proof. proof that i i've been doing this shit for way i've started saying an embarrassingly long amount of time for how like yeah. minuscule i am but uh, like i've been in the mix the whole time um mm-hmm. and i've always kind of been a bit of a content creator's content creator i've always been one of those people who's never gonna have the huge audience because you know, nothing against people who do have huge audiences. They're they're doing it right. Uh, some of them are, yeah, they're lowest common denominator sort. But I'm not, you know, secure the bag. I don't, I don't give a shit if that's the type of content creator you are. But there are content yeah. creators bigger than me who are themselves, and they just have more discipline, or uh, they're they they. they the stuff that they like jives a little bit better with searchability. We just talked mm-hmm. thirty minutes about the continuity of consciousness and soma. There's a lot of people who just want Warhammer. <laughs> yeah. And well, it's 
I know, I know. It's it's like I mean the content I put out too. Like I I, I don't know where I'd classify myself. I don't I don't think I'm at the level of content creators, content creator. I just I think I just don't care enough about anything that's not within me. I, I like which is what keeps me like small. Like yeah, like you said, if you're a big content creator, go get them. But like every time, anytime on any of the content stuff I did, if I ever done a battle time tome review, it's the most wildly popular thing, and I'm gonna be very yep. blunt. Battle Tome reviews are the most boring pieces of content I could ever watch. I've With got exception one, of one I've thing. One I've got one more unboxing. The, the, the next level. <laughs> next level. <laughs> Let's say the next level down of most. Th- uh, and, and Vince, Tom, Tyler, I love you guys. I watch every single one of your shows. Don't I... start a, like a West Side Story between Rant Cash and <sighs> Warhammer Weekly. No, go ahead. No, this is between this is between Strength Hammer. Anytime the show is fixing X Battle Tome, I listen to the news. I listen to the pick of the week. I listen to the hobby, and I sh- turn it off because I don't care about fixing a Battle Tome. Let a Battle Tome. I don't care about fan. You know, like it's like that's that's, and I've told Vince this, and I've, I've you know like. My, my my buddy Matt, he does the Big M's Power Hour. He loves that stuff, and I'm just like, listen, you are, and that's why he does the Big M separately. Like he, I post it short because like we're not monetizing it. It's just a, it's just the channel. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, but no, that's, that's, he that's solidarity he, with your with your crew. It's right, and he loves it. I'm like, you go to town. I'll post it. I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> 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 you know, like the time I care about fixing a battle tome is only whenever. I may be testing a battle tome as a play tester. That's it. <laughs> but, and maybe that also has something to do with why I don't do, care about other people's thoughts on it because I'm usually past it at that point. Do, I, it's who knows. Holy shit. When did Little Nightmares 2 swing into the lead? Or Little Nightmares 1 swing into the lead? Sorry. Uh, th- there's oh. a poll going on for uh, uh, Meftober, the charity portion. If if the Rantathon is a charity mm. marathon with a side of content for 30 straight hours in July. <laughs> Every year for three years running. This Meftober is a uh, content uh, like celebration, an extravaganza. <laughs> you, do you have a list of these puns? Like, uh, is it just like a list? I write down. That's great. I, I do write them down as I think of them, but my favorite is celebration because it's just so That's a good one. Um, yeah. It, like this is this is the time. You speaking of like you know like the content you want to make and so so on and so forth. I have yeah. run Meftober uh, under different names for six years. My tradition is every October, it actually starts in September because I don't stream on Halloween. Um, I Well, I, let's, I, that's, a, that's a personal holiday for you. It's I mean, my you anniversary. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, dang. Okay, this yeah. This will be my 12-year <laughs> anniversary with Lulu. Uh, yeah. I got kids now. Even if I didn't have the kids, we, it would still be her and I, like, literally partying you know like it's, it's yeah yeah absolutely. if it lands on a monday we're, we're calling in sick on tuesday you know like it's, <laughs> it's uh and, and like I'm, i want to take off tuesday it's it's our anniversary uh and they're like no you can't take off i'm like you know i'm calling in sick on tuesday then right so you can either get square with it or fire me and i'm like and i know yeah, you yeah. can't fire me so <laughs> like, um yeah uh, so it's uh yeah so it's it's uh but yeah so i usually start in september that way i can get 30 days in still and, and so on and right. so forth and i've just done it forever because it's what I say about Warhammer is it is a it's the game where all the voices in my head come to play together. You know, there's there's mm-hmm. um, you know, like the art because I'm, I'm an artist. I get to do some narrative. I get to model. I love the community. Um, yeah. You know, I I love being a fucking gamer and just like having a big <laughs> brain and being smart about stuff. Like, uh, but Meftober is the time where like that through line. I, I still use the same metaphor because it's hard to come up with good metaphors all the time. But it's where all the voices in my head come to come out as well or maybe mm-hmm. i'll start using like it's when i let all the demons out uh you know and, and during meftober there... so you don't you don't exercise the demons by getting rid of them you just let them out to go run around and burn literally exercise them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah literally yeah, physically exercise, physically exercise them. yeah physically exercise the demons <laughs> so the rest of the year i'm good uh no it's it's what it is it's uh because you don't actually beat demons of sufficient power you just keep them happy or tricked um but no it's it's like <laughs> The through line of horror is like one of those ones that goes through through everything. Um, it's uh, you know why the fuck do I play death? 
in everything, right? Like it's oh. it's they're the spooky thing, they're the horror thing, right? Like death and demons, I, beasts of chaos and and all of the death. That's what I play in Warhammer. Uh, when I was playing 40k, I played Blood Angels because they're fucking space vampires. Like if I yeah, go back to 40k ever, I'll play Necrons, like because they finally look how I think space skeletons should look with like sweet ass like nameless kings and fucking void dragons and look give give mm -hmm. me it you know we got why, tomb kings somewhere they're just in space right yeah now. why do i why <laughs> do i like slanesh as like as a host because they're fucking uh they're fucking cenobites like and hellraiser is dope as hell like there's like there's that through line every story i used to write mm -hmm. when i was growing up always had tended to have horror elements and the rpgs i've run my whole life tend to have horror elements even if i'm, I'm not running a strict um a strict world of darkness game ask katie eradicator she shows up in my in chatting every now and then she's in our in their in our discord uh ask her about a campaign called the aria of aorus and the thin ones the thin mm. ones were a species of monster i made up that looked like essentially like wire stick figure drawings made of tar and they hmm. physically possessed you by climbing in your mouth and unfolding their tar body inside your body to take over your nerve endings and pilot you like a mari marionette. So it was a. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. It was a. I mean, good. It's good. It's good. I hate it. <laughs> it was a physical possession. So like mm -hmm. all your like willpower and it meant nothing. It was about having like a high constitution and being able to reject them. And uh, at one point, mm -hmm. one of the characters got stabbed with a glass dagger filled with thin ones. And the Thin Ones hate fire, by the way, but basically you have to heat the host with so much fire it will kill them by the time it makes the Thin Ones uncomfortable. So they had to, like, to basically find out a way to roast their party member on a goddamn spit with protection <laughs> magics and, like, constant healing, like, trying to hold them together while burning them alive to get the Thin <laughs> One to come out. Interesting. Uh, and that was a high fantasy, like, Age of Sigmar style game. Like, it was, it yeah, was like, over well, the top and gonzo. But, like, think about how horrible that is. Because all my games it, always ha have something. Go ahead. Go on. You've been yeah, I was going to say, it's like, it's, it's, it's just, it's your intris intrinsic nature. Like, you are, like I said, I look at you and, and like, yeah, you are a lich. And you're always going to have that. Like, and, and I think, especially, like, with Warhammer and when we have, like, whether I, I I can't say so much for the sci-fi. I'm sure it's there on, on some level, um, but definitely more the fantasy. I think the fantasy. You know, like, it's we, in the name. Fan, it's a fantasy. It's yeah, in yeah, the but, name, right? Like, yeah, but like right. we all ta usually attach to an army. Everybody, almost everybody. Only like, one who hasn't is Relian, but that motherfucker's a liar. He likes the death armies and he likes Zeech. <laughs> uh, I I always saw him as a Zeech player, but like, well, I mean, like, there's a there's a select few like that like love you, know, you Relian. Uh, I'm I'm back now, so uh, you can start watching again. Go on, sorry. <laughs> it, like, him and Bill Souza, they attach to dominance, like winning. You know what I mean? But, like they're but just Sousa their still powerhouse has, is is still a, a, a he's still to me always gonna be a fact player. You know, he'll play whatever can win, but but is right. still well, maybe like, that's that's true. Like I, like I don't know. Like, it, regardless, it's like if we all sat down and said, "All right, what is my army?" Like I said, some people it's obvious. You. I mean, yours is all death, but like death, that's, that's it's how I me. cheat. It's it's how I cheat because I'm only allowed two armies, and one right. is Grand Alliance death, <laughs> right? That counts. That counts. And the other but is like, piece of chaos. Yeah. Go ahead. But like, like where where does that come from from within you? Because like you're attaching it to it somehow from something. Do you think my happy shining disposition is what drew me to Daughters of K? No, there's so there's there's something in here. It's just like yeah, blood is pretty beautiful. Like I like that. Like it's like that that sanguine I, I'm nature. Like. I like, like, it's not my happy, sunny dad that's like, Daughters of Cain. Like, no, there's, the, there's like, the dark part that's in me is just like, that's what attached to that army. It's the <laughs> it's Final Fantasy. Like, it's interesting. It's the Final Fantasy yeah. thing. There, whatever, there's a, I think there's a through line between Final Fantasy, uh, lifting, and Daughters of Cain. Like, because lifting is about, a, like, kind of like a physical perfection and, a, a, like, almost like a... And in a discipline type thing for me. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I think that there's, uh, like, Daughters of Cain are, they, they have a, a martial discipline like mm -hmm. a, an aesthetic mastery, you know, because like they're all like sculpted too. Like they're all like fucking gymnast builds, right? Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're all doing CrossFit. And, and then Final <laughs> Fantasy is like pure spectacle. Like you know, like Cloud is fucking wielding a a, a Volkswagen on the end of a hilt, and like you know yeah. he's got to have some sort of like isotonic 
uh, uh, mastery going on where he's like got the like what was it in uh, the layers of muscle have like built their interconnective tissue like so yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> you know whatever's going on there or, or I think you're more of a Final Fantasy VIII guy but like the point is mm-hmm. is like there's I think there's whatever that through line is for you it's 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 there and actually you know this is this is a new season this is the first time I actually took a proper hiatus to get my mm-hmm. mind right to get my body right like I um I crawled everybody toward uh uh toward the rantathon in in july i i it was, i was running a marathon the last calendar year um and i'm like there's the finish line i gotta get there i can't take my hiatus a- before it because i need to hype it the whole way up to it and if i take yeah. a break yeah. before that nobody's like the turnout's gonna take a hit i have mm-hmm. to keep talking on about warhammer to get people to show up and and uh we had a downturn in the economy. I had, this is no shade on them. This is actually a self-deprecation hit at me. Uh, I'll, I'll explain it in a second. I had very smart people who are professionals, accountants, lawyers, tell me you should set the goal at 7,000 as your floor. That is what we know you can raise. It's what you've raised both years in common. You can get to 7,000. We raised 10000 last year, and I'm like, no, I want to hit the same amount. Secretly, I wanted to hit 12000 though, because we mm. had $8,000 in, in prize support. And it not that we paid $8,000. It wasn't like, what did you just That's do? That's the estimated value, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, we had donations. We had people put in their own labor. Like, we had trades, you mm-hmm. know, going on. And, and so, like, about $8,000 in prizes. And to me, I'm like, my ego that I will always have and whether I want it or not is like, we have to get a 50% return on this investment, this imaginary number. We have to get more than 50. We have to get 50% plus 50% Mm -hmm. because I want to honor everybody who, who gave shit or donated. I want to show that it was worth it, that we didn't Mm -hmm. just like, because we could have just fucking eBayed it for $8,000 instead. Then, you know, like I I wanted to show that that we had and so we hit and we hit that twelve thousand. It was one of the most exhilarating things I've ever done. Is that last hour where it's just it's, <laughs> the push st- for it. We'd stop the show and we were just like, okay, donate now, and we're starting like to make up and we're throwing in shit. And now I have to go out to like Pennsylvania or Pittsburgh or some shit and get my ass beat in real a- and actual armor. But it's okay. I've, uh, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you're out this way because that, that's where I live. So yeah, whatever. Uh, summer slaughter, wherever yeah. summer slaughter is, I'll be out that way. Oh no, that's uh, summer slaughter's up. You'll drive past me. I drive past you, and I drive past. Yeah. Them, I guess, is... Well, if you drive past at the right time, we, I'll treat you to lunch or breakfast or whatever. If you can spare forty five minutes. Yeah. No. What uh, kicker? You know. Um. I would show my uh my shares of the Green Bay Packers to show that I'm an NFL owner, but it's got my like full legal name, my address, it's got fucking everything. On <laughs> Don't it. let's let's not dox yourself. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty hardcore dox. Like, and I'm pretty uh over the top. Like, you can you can figure out who the fuck I am pretty easily because I've I've been chronically online my whole life. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. I want you to at least put the effort into like not having one screen cap you can share with the laziest assholes on the planet, right? Uh, <laughs> I told you, uh, my leftism, my anarchism, uh, our anarchic principles and my leftism, uh, always been a work just so I could become the owner class. Uh, <laughs> I am, yeah, yeah, it, I am the lying yeah. left, the grifter of the left that you all, <laughs> I'm the one who's just out for all the money there is on the left. I wanted that Soros dash. <laughs> i've been lying the whole time no <laughs> yep yep as soon as you got that that share yeah i got the share I, I own an nfl team like i am owner uh-huh. cl- ownership i own my house like i am uh look at me and and weep that's why like uh, the trad cons <laughs> can't even make me feel bad i'm like i literally have everything you want i have the nuclear family <laughs> i have two dogs like i'm about to win a halloween decorating competition like yeah, I saw those. I saw those decorations. That's in, not in even halfway done. I just, uh, I just, Jeez. I just built the archways out of PVC and a, and a dream. I did, I'm not handy, but I saw somebody. Okay. Uh, but like, I'm like, we need archways because we need. I want to get the 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 lights to go from the top of my house down to the archways and then down out onto yeah. the sidewalk. And I'm like, so we need these archways. And I saw people. I'm like, I'm like, okay, archway. Fucking seven hundred dollars a thousand. Fuck that. I'm not. You know, one yeah, of no, those. Just make it yourself. Yeah. Yep, and I'm I'm not particularly handy. I um, and I like 
went on like okay Halloween archways. Nobody had like a recipe for yeah. them or measurements or anything. Like they just showed them, and I'm like, and I saw the structure a structure that like looked sufficient. I'm like, I can build that. <laughs> this is PVC pipe, and so I yeah. went in. And I looked at like what their PVC was, and then I'm looking at the prices. I'm like, well, I want to grab the two inch PVC because that's like hefty. I'm like, oh fuck that, that's thirty dollars. I'm gonna grab the twelve dollar ones that are yeah. that are like one and a half inch or whatever. And I'm like, I'm gonna grab the twelve. Why are they so much more expensive when they're two inches instead of the one and a half? It's fucking double and again the price. Jesus fucking cr- Jesus. <laughs> what the fuck is going no. on in the hey. PVC market? Oh, I know it's the pizza thing, right? Because pizzas are like exponentially bigger. Uh, when you up the, <laughs> sorry. Oh yeah, when you up the size, the inches change. Yeah, no, it's it's. Hey, but the, the way you get handy is by just doing stuff. Like I said, I wasn't I wasn't handy till I bought a house and I had to start fixing things and figure I, it out. I think you, you I'm call dad of... or granddad or you look on YouTube where well, you just kind of just is, guess. And, and that comes back to the community. You that just goes, do it. That goes back to the community thing. Like I I called Brendan, uh, Brendan Melnick, Cubic Shenanigans. Quite frankly, mm, Cubic yeah. Shenanigans. Uh, if there's three people who like kind of share in the success of 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 uh of the rantathon sort of like e- like equally that it's 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 cubic shenanigans and uh dave uh, g dad they <laughs> uh more than anybody have pushed me have donated i had a fucking box a start collecting box for my own collection of beasts of chaos that's what that was going to be the grand prize of the first rantathon, you know that was it. I was mm-hmm. just gonna, I was gonna go live for twenty seven hours to make fun of one person who said uh, my shows are too long. <laughs> I'm like, I got a piece of chaos box. Let's raise like what money we can for 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 mental health. Like, you know what? What anything we raise is is a win. Then fucking Sean Benson uh. from the Upside Down is like, hey, what if? Uh, how much would we have to raise for you to get a tattoo? And I'm like, okay, I, I did fucking math. I'm like, well, on average, you know, it's my average payout for a month as, as a Twitch affiliate. Uh, you know, this is how many viewers I typically get. So, like, it, let's go ahead and just, like, be generous. We'll double the amount of viewers I'm going to get because I'm going to, like, hammer this home. Uh, this is the average thing. I'm going to times that by 10. Okay, $1,100. Mm-hmm. And uh, we raised, like, 2000 <laughs> in the first hour. <laughs> you just crushed it. And we scrambled. The whole like, oh, no. twenty-seven hours to come up with more incentives and more stuff, and and a, a huge part of it was just that that communal support that nobody gets anywhere by themselves in life in anything, you know, mm. like whether it's that that verifying your memories we were talking about earlier on with the the continuity of consciousness and soma, you know, checking with the boys or the homies, uh, y- your girls, your home girls, like whatever it is to to you know it. it we're better together you know that's that's my thought anyway that's my dirty sure. lefty principles <laughs> <laughs> for sure no no we are and i said speaking speaking of the boys i gotta give a shout out because i see uh, the one and only val heffelfinger out there in the chat it's nice to see you in here buddy <laughs> hey val if, uh, you don't first time chatter go on go on Sorry. yeah yeah uh legend from the 40k community as far as i'm concerned from uh my time before i was known on the internet and i remember hearing that name and and uh seeing his work so Hey, if you want if you want Vince to paint you a mini, I don't know if you're you're familiar with Vince Venturello in the 40k community, but very good painter, or Ulf paints the mountain that paints as we call him around this part. Uh, I am running. Speaking of like the Rantathon, um, so the Rantathon, I kind of like it. Uh, it was like a, a finish line. I'm like, I just got to get to the Rantathon, and I'm I'm gonna take yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I I, I got to the, we we did the Rantathon. We crushed my personal goal. We we crushed everything we could. Like we got, we did it. You know, and I'm like. Phew, and I just like deflated. I'm like, I'm done. I'm like, I need to take a time off. Uh, scheduling guests and like being punctual and being on. Mm-hmm. This is not a persona. This mask is actually my face, by the way. Like, um, uh, this, the meat under <laughs> <It's true. laughs> the meat underneath it is just a body I I consumed a long time ago, and I threw my psychic demi lich consciousness into. Uh, the bones are actually from uh from my real body from a thousand years ago when I first learned the dark arts of necromancy. All right, um, no, no, uh, Mephisto's not a persona. Like it might be me turned up to eleven in some respects, or like certain parts of me 
that I'm mm-hmm. just like this is you know I'm gonna be this part of me here. We all contain multitudes though. You're you're not not you at work. That's work you. You know like yeah. you're not like the person you are with your partner isn't not you. You know mm-hmm. like that's who you are too. And they're all these versions of yourself. And Mephisto, there are content creators out there. We're like bullshit. That's not you. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You know like For there's sure. you know but like. But I I lean very hard into who I am to make this show, mm. you know. Um, and uh, and that takes a lot out of me. It it sometimes I just want like I don't want to be on. I'm just like oh I'm gonna <laughs> play a video game and watch a horror movie well, and you know. And it's it's hard. You know, it's not that that's that's not me either. You know, or this is more me. It, but again, to be that version to guide a conversation to to have an interview mm-hmm. to do all that stuff can really be taxing you know i mean there's there's the camera tax period i mean yes being awesome. recording recording gives you a tax recording live gives you even more of a tax so yeah for sure that that that's there but like i said it's you're right like in it, there's cycles and phases too like there's times when i know you're really amped up to be this avenue of your persona on here and there's there's times where you're clearly not but like you know you're disciplined enough to do it you know it's I, I, nothing, yeah i, I feel like wrong with that. i've had yeah. those moments where i'm sitting there at like before i go live where i'm talking to, to the guest i'm like all right how's it all right let's uh, go ahead you know i have tech travel is it? <laughs> you know i'm doing that and then like the camera comes on and i'm like how's it been? and i'm just like and i and and i and it's not like i get a surge real quick when i do it you know like it, it's part of it's the discipline and the habit like right right i mean it's you, you you find the groove real quick of what you're supposed to be doing again yeah and and once for I get, the lights yeah, camera action yeah and once i get talking to somebody like the the energy comes up because i, I really do feed off the sort of rhythm and the, the back and forth of guests and stuff like that mm-hmm, and i mm-hmm. uh you know why does the rant cast why does rant cast not have a, a script or even like show notes uh because i my show is 100 percent jazz I know all the <laughs> chords and progressions. I know all the rhythms and the rules. And it's just putting them together live with somebody else. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I didn't get here on accident. Like I said, I have an embarrassing amount of, of, of journalism <laughs> and education that I'm still in debt for. And, uh, and, and a lot of failures. Um, you know, if you go back uh, the, the, the podcast I referenced at the beginning, the technophiles podcast, uh, the the clip that they used for me to because there's a there was a competitive thing where like to get to get the cold open clip on the show mm-hmm. was like a big deal it's a conglomerate it's a huge network you 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 know everybody but you also know that like you're brought in because you bring a certain talent or a certain thing that they're looking for you're cast mm-hmm. to be on right. that podcast all right um and so like the person who gets the cold open was kind of like its own trophy or medal the one I got I misspoke. I, I talked about the Globe Theater, right? Okay. In the Elizabethan era. And I think I said the Elizabethan area. Oh. <laughs> Listen, you can't sweat that and, stuff. And no, seen... I, and, and so, like, my shame is eternal because I can't even plug my own content. Uh, but, like, my origin story as a, as a games journalist, as this, like, venerable you... <laughs> content creator. Without, like, you go back and the... And the the one I'm the most famous for, I have like this horribly like undermining misspeak that just makes me sound like a fucking idiot <laughs> when I'm trying to make Listen. this like lofty point about like uh, of all things horror comics. By yeah. the way, that was actually like I was, I was yeah. dying in horror and sen- it was about censorship in video games, and I was talking about like how they tried to censor horror comics and Penny Dreadfuls, and I was t- and I took the horror angle because the through line. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. As Val said, Freudian slips about the Elizabethan area start at least one war of the Spanish. Very true. But if you want to get mis- mistypes and everything, just look at literally every other tweet I put out. And usually the ones that are more popular are the ones where I have the bigger mistypes. It's just that's just life. Now, by contrast, you have hard work and a lot of, as you said, embarrassingly amount of background to get to where you are. I'm here by luck and I'm aware of it. <laughs> you have charm. To you you also you but you, I'm, I'm you have but a, it's all if it wasn't for the old world blowing up and people getting mad and leaving and me just remaining enduring yeah that was and being like i know i am enjoying age of sigmar if it wasn't for that right timing 
I mean, I'm still, I'd still be who I am today, but I wouldn't be what I'm doing now, <laughs> like on any level. And and like I said, it becomes full circle because you know it's like me and Valve had conversations. I'm also playing fantasy again, so it's like <laughs> it, it's interesting. You know, you know, I um, uh, so I, I've uh, I've been kind of towing it for a little bit here. Uh, so like Rantathon, finish line, race for mm-hmm. mental health. Um, I and Meftober has traditionally been about me. It's my time to cut loose and not have to worry about the algorithm making content that I think people are going to like. I'm just going to like fuck around and do my thing. Um, mm-hmm. And then in November, I'll start to do the holiday season stuff. I'll start to like do the, you know, try to make shows that line up with like the boxes that are being released and so on and so forth. Right. Ooh, like that, yeah, that's yeah. been the rhythm. of This is the fourth season of, of, of Rantcast. And uh, Jacob Barry, I love you, brother. But like, uh, it's not an arbitrary number. I'm going into my fourth year of the fucking show. Um, <laughs> I've done this for <laughs> four fucking years. Like going on four four years now, okay? Like this is this is a lot, and and I've got I, I had figured out a rhythm. I I had gotten into it, and uh, there went the train of thought. Hang on, I'll get it back. I'd say ADHD moment, but I'm trying not to. Blame. That's fine. It's fine. Um, come back. hang on. It was um talking about this. Uh, the, the, oh, so Meftober typically has been like just like my time where I get to cut loose and like kind of bullshit, kind of like the off season. Right. Like, it's just yeah. like, I'm, I'm just going to fuck around and then, like, I'll hit it and we'll get into the grind for. I start planning uh, the next uh, Rantathon in July. We start planning it in December and January when people go on break mm-hmm. and stuff. And we can, like, get the people who help me run it together. And we start, like, what are we going to do? What are our goals? What, what, who are we going to contact for gifts and guests? And, you know, right. Like, it's, the whole thing yeah. starts in December again. I mean, so December to July is Rantathon. Basically, mm-hmm. planning, prepping, yeah. coordinating. I put a lot Good of word sh- out. work into that. We we were on fucking uh, trapped under plastic. We got an advertisement this this last year. Oh, nice. Yeah. What's? Well, I mean, it's not even that. Like, you're not just grabbing. I mean, in essence, you're grab. I mean, you, you your friends. Like, but like, you're not just grabbing. Like, you know, you the people here and there. I mean, you're getting high level content creators you're getting your friends you're getting people that you know can fill time slots you're getting people who are right professional you know like the, the, the was the cubicle seven folks right. not, and and other like you're you're getting a wide swath of people not just you know me going and getting like my club mates to, to help me out with it which is like a much different level of planning that people i think don't maybe don't fully understand until like you actually do that right and well i mean you're not wrong but, like, if, because I'm a stubborn asshole with an ego, uh, part of me loves to keep chat gang central to that rantathon. I could fill every block with somebody famous, and I kind of refuse to, um, because I want that grassroots heart to stay intact. I, I have base. I say I'm a content creator's content creator because chances are every content creator's heard of me. Uh, mm-hmm. Chances are. At any given time in the longevity of their career, that they have used a Mephistoism, or they have used one of my quotes, or one of my observations, or one of my things, they know more about me than I know about their shows because I've stopped watching AOS stuff. The only time I know anything happens with other <laughs> content creators is when I get DMs from from uh, their fans or mine, basically, and then and then I just like fucking hyperfix it. I'm like, well, what the fuck, you know, like, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh. You know, it, it's 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 interesting because it is a lot of plan, but I want that like grassroots heart. I want to stay true to my sensibilities, and y- fuck, I'm gonna listen to my therapist here. I'm gonna I'm gonna allow myself to actually give myself a compliment. I'm, I'm gonna try without walking it back or being wry or being sarcastic to myself immediately after saying it. There are people with a thousand times my platform that do less for charity than I do. There are people who could like wave their hand and have people delegate and do that shit for them. And raise ten thousand dollars, you know, and mm-hmm, they and sure. they fucking don't. And uh, I take that as a point of pride. I'm like, like, I get upset when I know that my B. Dave Walters episode of of rant rantcast had seventy viewers. I'm fucking pissed. This is the guy who GM the cast of Stranger Things. He's the mm-hmm. first GM televised on network TV. Mm-hmm. Like, 
This is probably the biggest guest I will ever land on the show. He's a fucking A-list celebrity. Yep. 70 people watched it. And you I'm just... That, you, go ahead. you hear that, chat gang? Fuck you. It's not, no, because... <laughs> no, I'm, ha- kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's I'm kidding. Because <laughs> I have 70 loyal fans. No, you. yeah, you have 70 loyal fans. That I'm I just, all I'm know t- the names of directly. You know, it's, it's, it's fucking... <laughs> well, you that- know, you're, you, yeah, you, you're connected to your audience on a level that, like... The larger ones just simply can't. They and can't and be. to be and fair, and to be, to be yeah. fair, to be fair, there are some out there that would never want to be. But yeah, no, it's 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 a different it's a different level. Like, but there's a quality quality versus quantity of content. Like, we could get into that stuff, right? Too, no, like, and, and I try to remind. But like, what matters? That. What matters right. is is you reached out. And he said, "Yes, I want to be on your show. This is sound, sounds great." And that's where it stops. It doesn't matter if two people watched it and then Russ maybe watched the VOD later or whatever. Like, that's it. He, you remember he like, hey, I'd love to have you on to talk about this. And he said yes, and a few people tuned in to watch it. Do you, do you, that's do you, all that matters in the end of it. No, 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 no. No. Okay, where are you going? Do you remember what I said about, like, we had $8,000 in prize support, and I, I oh, had you... to get 12000 for my for for it to feel validating to the universe? Okay, yeah. Because if we had just ebated instead, we'd have raised the $8,000. You know, like, I had to get a 50% return on that investment. Like, if I line up in Warhammer, I've never, ever hidden my competitive uh, lean in Warhammer, in AOS. And and that comes with a certain degree of pitfalls in this community. Because I, I feel like n- not a lot of content creators can have their cake and eat it, too, when it comes to being a competitive person. But taking the casual line does that make sense Mm-hmm. yeah like I, I i try to defend all ways to play this game um i try to especially defend the 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 sort of like healthy middle tables and the like and the 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 democratization of your experience your free time your leisure your art you know like mm-hmm. it, it, that's important to me but like i know when i put my models down on a table i'm gonna try to whoop your ass and mm-hmm. i'm gonna get mad if i if i fuck up and then like i look like an <laughs> idiot on the table like ah like Ugh, and i'm gonna like go and beat myself up because i always go inside with that stuff and this brings okay. me back to b dave walters what the fuck did i do wrong that i didn't get 700 people to watch that show did i not advertise it enough was i not a good enough host did i not you know and it just it, 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 that's that's where your brain goes where it's like mine went, obviously went a very different direction but that's yeah, just because our brains yeah, are yeah, wired yeah, differently yeah, 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 yeah but right. like okay i see it i see, I see where you're at now yeah, and that and that's and that's what I'm trying to say is like I and and I try to ignore the metrics. I try. I uh, um, I'm happy with what I do. Like that quality versus quantity is something I I take to heart. The reason mm-hmm. I have such pride in the Rantathon is because people with a thousand times my platform can't do what I do. I right. think they can't do what I do because they don't have those intimate connections with their with their audience and their friends and the community. Mm-hmm. You know, like they have a. Quite frankly, they have a very parasocial relationship, which is isn't a bad thing. It's not a it's not a value statement. Parasocial is one of those pop psych terms that has gained a negative connotation, but it is a neutral term. Mm-hmm. Parasocial is good when you turn on the TV and you veg out to watching your favorite comedian, and your work yeah. day sucks less. That's good parasocial relationship. A bad parasocial relationship is by my pillow, uh, <laughs> and I don't know you, but I'm going to pretend to. Like, buy or, my bathwater. Yeah, buy my bathwater or whatever, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, bathwater would have been the better. Yeah, see, that was a, if we had had the power of editing, I would have went with the bathwater. That would be, <laughs> that's a better one, right? There, it's it, it can be good, it could be bad. But, like, I know Emmett and Elaine. I'm not saying we're, like, close personal fucking friends, but I have mm-hmm. a real relationship with them. Right. So when I get Cubicle 7 on, it's because I have a real relationship with these, these people, not... Cre- yes, they're creators, but like I know the people. I've talked, you know. I try to keep that connection. If I show up at a Warhammer Open, I'm gonna walk up and talk to you as a human, not as the Warhammer oh. Open man, right? Like, oh yeah, like like you like when you asked me to come on for the the Meftober, you're, you're just like, hey, it's pretty much like you like, hey Chuck, you wanna you wanna shoot the shit for a little bit, and then we'll probably talk about Warhammer on occasion. I'm like, hell yeah. And then we then we both went on a rabbit hole somewhere else. But it's yeah, like, yeah, I wanted to talk about like, like, how fitness is scary, and like, but like I covered myself because I was gonna call it like <laughs> fitness is scary was gonna be the episode or mm-hmm. something like that, and then we would have had to talk about fitness, but I called it the Swolter right. because see, you're swole, and 
and uh, ghosts. And you're guys. Yeah, yeah I'm the, I bring the lich <laughs> energy. Well, I, we'll we'll get we'll get to fitness at some point. Maybe I don't know. It, like, yeah. yeah, go work out, everybody. Go work out. <laughs> go for a walk three to five least. times a week for forty five minutes. Get some free weights. Free. Yeah, yeah. Fruit and veggies are delicious and hydrate. Done. There's your fitness. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> yeah, uh, my my hydration glass. By the way, I, this is an El Cheapo. Um, this is the cheapest, like, of any of my tumblers or glasses I own. This is about 30, uh, 32 ounces. Um, I got this thing at, like, TJ Maxx for, like, $6. I've never yes. had a glass keep water this cold. This is, <laughs> this is like, day-old water. It's still cold to the touch. I don't know what the fuck. That's awesome. Weird Chernobyl, like, Chernobyl chemicals they use to make this cheap-ass, like, metal glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like the double walls they must have like that's great they must be a company that went out of business because they ripped off like bud keg or something like that or got oh, you, you know like yeah, something a, like that i have like a knockoff yeti like when yeti was like out and like everyone's like oh, i have to have a yeti it's like some knockoff and i got it for free because like i got samples from the company at like my my job and i went to an amusement park in the middle of july and i took full of ice and water and that was it and i left it in the car because i forgot about it came back eight hours later it was 97 degrees minimum all day and like i was in the sun and like the ice was melted i picked up that thing god damn it it was cold and i was like this is the best mug i've ever had yeah, same, <laughs> same thing like, happens to this like, yeah just like that yeah the ice isn't rattling around anymore but it's still fucking it's still ice water to me i'm like i can't drink warm <laughs> water i can't stand it i can, the only way i uh, drink warm water is if it's in like a like a sealed bottle it's it's a total subconscious thing where like um, if it's like, if it's a glass of like, I am signs, like I'm the little girl from signs. If the water gets warm while I'm drinking it, I'm like, I'm it's some kind of amoebas. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> put it over here. It's like got weird science critters inside of it. Like, nope, fucking go over there. See, go my ahead, my wife's the same. My wife's the same. Like whenever, like I'll be going downstairs, like before bed, she's like, Hey, get me some more water. And I have to get the water. Like we have a nice filter to filter out all the fluoride and yeah, the we, other crap. Got a filter, yeah. 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 And and it's like I can't just use that. I have to have the jug in the fridge to give her the cold water. Whereas me, I remember, and this is like a core memory. And it wasn't like yeah, it's like it's not uh, bad. What's, it's not that, bad. what's the, uh, the what's that uh, not Pixar DreamWorks maybe the core memories? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Inside uh, out, ooh. inside out. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's like out. a core memory inside <laughs> out. Got it. Like it's like yeah, got the little it's... gold orb that's like inside the little like the mini Chuck Morris. Like yes. put it inside the cortex. All right. Yes, and it's it's uh it was. I was playing little league baseball and you know, my, my father supported me so much in that. And you know, he, I had like a double head or something. So like he came and like, he gave me like a Gatorade between, between the games and all that stuff. Just talking with me. And I, I took a sip of it and like, clearly like he came from work, like, you know, like he, my, my father's wonderful human being. I, I love him to death. And he gave it to me and I took a sip of it. And I'm like, Oh, it's being not a cold. Good parent is metal AF. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like and i took a sip of it and like just the kid in me is just like oh it's not cold and like i'm used to drinks just being cold and my dad just like casually said well is it wet i'm like yeah it is and i kept drinking and like it's just like for me i don't like ever since then like like and i remember that quote and i say it to people all the time they're like like oh this water's not not cold anymore i'm like yeah but is it wet and like, yeah. but like, and like for, that made it for me okay. I don't care about the temperature of the water. Like at this, there could be a water bottle that's been sitting out in my house for like I'll, three I'll days. I know it's been bottle. sealed. It's, it's different. Yeah, I'll drink a hot well, water like, bottle. Even, like, yeah, even like, it doesn't matter. Like, doesn't matter what temperature the water is, unless it's boiling, I guess. But <laughs> no, it's <laughs> so like it's, yeah, it's a core memory. It's just like it's, it's, it's wet. It's like, fine. I I won't drink my coffee when it gets too cold. I'll drink it at like room temperature, no problem. I guess some people have a problem with like room temperature, uh, room temperature coffee. Oh, I don't. Like I'll drink it. Doesn't bother me. I yeah. drink it like hot through room temperature to like a little bit below room temperature, and then the minute it gets like cold, cold, I'm like, ah, dead to me. And I have to like, go, I, I have to go microwave it again, or like, okay, or or like it's just you know if I'm like out at work or whatever, then it gets dumped and I go and buy a new cup of coffee. But usually I have um uh, this this is my uh my coffee Your coffee mug, and this one keeps it like it usually doesn't drop below room temperature with that even in like a ten mm -hmm. or twelve hour work day. I was exact opposite like I, I i like hot coffee like I, I like the hot coffee to start my day i have two three cups oh of i want it hot in the morning especially you know like give me that but because like, like it's like the heat punches you in the face yeah and, it feels good it's and, and i like i need that in the morning especially yeah. i wanted my coffee but, to torture me you know i just yeah it, i wanted to, to but whenever down and ask me <laughs> the safe word 
in the morning. Yeah. Sorry, go on. But, but no, no, but for me, like if I, if I get busy at work or like distracted and I come back like an hour later and that coffee's still there and it's cold. Cause I drink out, I drink out of these like tin mugs now. I don't know. That's, I just like them. And like, it's, it can be cold and I'm just like, okay, I'll just finish it. Hmm. Like now, if I'm done with my coffee and there's I mean, still it is left, wet, like, so I, you're, you're internally. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, the only, the only time for me, it's like, I, I have learned that like, don't just drink it cause it's there. Like if I'm jittery and like, I know I don't need more coffee and like, maybe I made an extra cup and I thought I needed it and I don't. It's like when I'm done with coffee, stop. Like, and I'm good with that, <laughs> but still, where are we going with this? Warhammer. Uh, I was going to, I was going to go on a tangent, <laughs> but uh, I'm go going to actually go uh, refill the aforementioned water cup. And Do you're it. going I got... to vamp on a topic. You've got a you've got a corporate one you were going to talk about. I kind of want to be here. For uh, that it's one, a, it's a, it's. I want you to be here for this one. I want to be here for this one. It. So maybe you're going to tell people some fitness tips, tricks. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can't get this uh, audience to zero real quick. You know what? Oh please. We're gonna we're gonna talk I'm not about. Here to, I'm not here to keep the like weird atheist conservative in check with my like pseudo like anarcho <laughs> like syndicalist garbage oh, no sorry i love you man i you know i love you so i trust you with the well, audience chat gang call him on his bullshit if he's an asshole while i'm gone <laughs> i'm not gonna be an asshole i'm gonna be boring as hell all um right. so, so you know about is... how great warhammer fantasy battles is that a chat gang will be all right oh we're going we're going deeper oh shit oh my god napoleonic minis <laughs> yes oh um, oh like okay so yeah, yeah, tell... the audience is your chat gang i'm sorry i can't stop him <laughs> sorry we'll, we'll see when he gets back Oh, uh, yeah. So, like I said, I'm not going to bore you guys fully with Napoleonics, but I've been on a big history kick these past couple of years, um, and I find it odd. And I, I it's it's it is kind of funny because, like, obviously, I play Age of Sigmar, I play War 40k, I'm playing more War Fantasy again because I have a crew that wants to play it more time. But you know, my weekly crew I hang out with, they like playing other games. Like 40k is their only modern game, so which is fine. Like I'm trying to get them to do Age of Sigmar; they're not opposed to it, but We'll get them when we get there. But it's been fun as a war gamer to have a different outlet. That's where I'm going to play Horus Heresy, because that's the only other people I, in my area that want to play Horus Heresy. You know, and then we did this big epic more time board, if you saw my social medias. But with, uh, yes, Napoleonics is better than Flames of War. I, <laughs> even though I've been on a big history kick, and like I've studied like the World War Ones and two and all that sort of stuff, I like going farther back right now. But yeah, uh, starting next year, I'm going to do a Napoleonic army. Uh, and what does that entail? It entails getting books like this on the heraldry and uniform so I can paint, you know, like the the literal meme from was a 40-year-old virgin, like, make, make Mr. Blue Hands, Mr. White Pants now. That fun stuff. <laughs> Ramirez is coming up. Mm, true. Um, but it, it the fun thing about it, and if anyone actually really does like history, I mean, I... I, I I've been finding more and more YouTube channels that do lots of great history content. And I literally went through nine plus hours of Napoleonic, uh, like documentaries <laughs> online because it was fascinating to me. Um, and even on top of that, like, you know, if you're going to do Napoleonic army, like you want to be historical and I, I, I want to go full historical. I don't want to just like, kind of like half ass it. I want to make sure I, I choose the core, choose this. And like, I have a, shop owner who's been doing this type of stuff for a long time so he's like you need to find out which of napoleon's marshals you like which you know was three hours on top of the extra 12 hours of just learning about the napoleonic era to find out these personalities and, and what i will say if you like the personalities uh type of concept the napoleon's marshals were a bunch of bunch of personalities they're all so crazy or egotistical or just screwed up like it, it's 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 wild and you know but that, that's also that was the fun of it like figuring out which one i kind of attached to for whatever hook or crook that was part of it to then you know and i eventually went with uh marshall nay he's one of the, one of the, the he's called the bravest of the brave and i'm going to choose one of his cores uh I think it's going to be from the retreat from Russia when they were getting their butts kicked. But, you know, like it's now nah, turn up 28. I saw turn up 28 uh, kicker uh, uh, re catching up with the chat now. I like the concept, but it's not something that intrigues me enough to dive into that yet. But I do. I do see where that connection is for sure. Like 
I, I have my fantasy fill with fantasy as it exists now with Sigmar and, and even fantasy battles. But like with Napo- like Napoleonics, this is starting like a very like, you know, I'm 20 years too young to maybe be starting Napoleonics, but uh, God damn it, it's fun. <laughs> Like just just studying history, especially if you start looking like I can highly recommend the Revolutions podcast by Mike Duncan. Um, I mean, you're going to it's you're going to take a year to get through it. But like you start learning that there's not histories of the world. There's just the history and it just never stops. Like even into today, it's pretty crazy, like how that all connects. And it's it's fun. It's worth it. And that's exactly now that mess back. That's exactly why you need to paint like the little stripes on the paint. <laughs> I was just talking about my, my my newfound love of it and like how exciting it's been for no me. I, I, didn't, I didn't bore the them. Stork minis, but Napoleonic's as an era and how that's led to me wanting to do Napoleonic warfare as far as like a strategy IRL? War game. or okay. No, no, I, I'm not. Uh, I don't think there's the, the reenactment type stuff. You know, not, not now, that. And, no, and like if I ever did want to get into that, I think around here. Uh, there's the French Indian War, and then the Civil War is the too big in my I, I, local area. I for know some folks who could get you into some shit around that those, those parts. <laughs> no, it's, for uh, sure, for sure. No, it's it's you know me, man. I'm always I've always been about the passion, the love of the thing, and what the thing mm-hmm. is. You know, I, I I love to use the crochet metaphor uh, as a metaphor for this. This for if you tell me somebody is like the best crocheter on earth, I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I want to see it. You know, like, yeah. you know, or, <laughs> Show or, me. or or if somebody's like, I love this thing more than anything, and I'm like, tell me, and they'll be speaking in utter jargon, but I will hear mm-hmm. their energy, and like, and that's like the the Star Trekian like universal translator to me. I don't understand the fucking words, but I know those emotions because those are the emotions I feel about the shit I love, and and I just mm-hmm. like want enough common lexicon to like understand why I should love what you love. Or not why I should love what you love, but why you love what you love. And, and, right. and Where, like, where's my passion come from within it? Yeah. And, and, yeah, go ahead. While, while you're away, the one thing I did say, and like I said, I, I told anyone in chat, I'd gladly share this, but like I did hours upon hours, like 12 plus hours of history documentaries about the Napoleonic Wars and the era. Mm-hmm. And then when I was trying to choose, okay, what army do I want to do? Like, Napoleonic, that's just a lot of armies. Even the French, there's so many armies within that, that army, like the Grand Army. And then my, my shopkeeper who's done this sort of stuff forever, he's like, you need to find out which marshal you connect with. And like I said, I, and I, this is where I think you would find interest in that. Because like, obviously, Napoleon is a character. Like, There's the memes and there's the stuff. And like, Not there's short, always, by the way. Not short at all. Yeah, not short. But like, not even studying him. Like, You could study him for sure. But his marshals was such a cast of characters, wildly different egos and... Well, fucked up this. Like, 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 this is the guy who said, like, you cannot stop me. I spend like 10,000 lives a day or something like that. Like, he just, he had such. <laughs> but, but, yeah, go ahead. I said, like, I, I think you would appreciate the marshals. I, I, I at least will, I'll send you the stuff. And if you ever have three hours for a rabbit hole, there you go. <laughs> I'm not anamorphing <laughs> this. I'm not anamorphing this. Okay, anamorph, <laughs> uh, by the way, chat gang. Uh, Kicker knows what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, for those of you who are new to chat gang, um, I didn't know. I had ADHD until uh, I got suspicious that I might have ADHD uh, during COVID lockdown, largely because uh, a lot of people in the world had time to sit down and slow down and take inventory of themselves. And people like Chuck Moore, who is probably a serial killer because he's too Mm. cool to... I'm sorry, man. How many? How many? How many is a sil- How many for cereal? What is it? Three. It's past five. Yeah, maybe oh, past mm, five. okay, maybe. And you gotta have like a pattern, like. It, but like, you could be in the phase where you're discovering your pattern. Like, maybe you don't know yet. It's, maybe we'll see. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I'll reset the the serial killer gag in a minute. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's going. it's you painted your whole backlog, and 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 a lot of folks had time to like take inventory of themselves and think about who they were mm-hmm. and and see their lives and stuff like that. And so it was. I started to suspect I had ADHD because every, a lot of my peer group and a ton of the content creators I consume uh, were like all able to like finally what I call run diagnostics. They were finally able to run diagnostics on themselves and be like, oh, like. And then they went in and and, and I started seeing the memes and I'm like, oh shit, I think I have ADHD. And it wasn't like one of those like 
WebMD type thing. For you're like, if you go on right. WebMD, you can diagnose yourself. You have everything. You have you're diphtheria. Die you have yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a. This is my experience all the time at all times. Every one of these is everything I am at all times. The show mm-hmm. is called Rantcast, which has become my mm-hmm. like uh, one of my battle cries for like how did I know, and like kind of laughing <laughs> about it. I'm like ah, fuck right. Me. Um, and uh. Shit, I lost it again. There went the train. Uh, it was it wasn't diagnosed. It was just recently diagnosed. Uh, got me on it because of the lockdown. You painted a bunch of minis. I think I lost that one entirely. Oh, Animorphs. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so, um, I uh didn't know that what I was doing when I like learned everything about how to, how to tie all of the knots one day because I had a question about a book I was writing, and I was like. How many knots is it technically in a noose, or is that a myth type thing? Like, is okay. it, you know, and then and then next thing I know, it was like seven hours later, and I'd learned everything about like naval knots. <laughs> yeah. Internet black holes, Wikipedia like rabbit holes, blah blah mm-hmm. blah. This is just something I'm prone to. I think everybody is to a certain extent. Um, I think we all do it. Um, but like there is a the difference between. A little ADHD, which uh, anyone in, in the neurodivergent communities hates the I'm a little OCD, I'm a little ADHD. You can't help it. You are that always. And that's why that language it bugs people who are neuro- neurodiverse. Mm. It's, it's You can't help it. You're not a little it. You always are it. It's like saying I'm a little... Uh, it's like if you're like if you trip and go like I'm a little amputee sometimes like it, it's, <laughs> mm, yeah okay. yeah okay it's, it's a good, it's a good uh, yeah. like okay mm, no it's like, are you a Lego character it's, mm. yeah yeah so I mean that's that's how it reads to people who are neurodiverse if you're not and, and I think a lot of people are undiagnosed sure but like again it's not like you are a little bit it you are you're not and it's a very as we said at the beginning of the show it's it's a physical thing. Are you tall or short? Are you, bro, mm-hmm. Your brain is wired different. Um, and uh, the most famous one happened live during one of my random streams because uh, K.A. Applegate, I think was the name of the writer. I'm terrible with names. Um, I think it's Applegate, though. Uh, and then her husband helps her with a little bit of some of the stuff on the back end. Uh, like wrote like the most savage tweet I had seen like ever and I'm like oh shit that's the lady who wrote Animorphs I read Animorphs when I was in like third grade (laughs) heck yeah we all did (laughs) and then it was like I had started like reading all the Wikipedias I like I (laughs) live (laughs) live on stream I'm like reading Wikipedia I like oh shit I thought that I went to like their personal website and, like, I had to take my stream down because I started watching other content creators' videos, like, <laughs> live on stream. And I didn't stop until the sun came out. And, like, I just, like, walked out of my office, which had suddenly become, like, a sauna. And you could see, like, the fumes coming out of it. Because, <laughs> like, my brain had been kicking off so much steam. <laughs> and I'm just like, I know everything I'm... about Animorphs. Ask me anything. Like, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yes. do I care about Animorphs? No. <laughs> no, but I know about it. But I know everything well, about it suddenly, and it's like yep. it, it's and that was hyper. That's hyperfixation. That's an ADHD thing, and and so now the inside joke chat gang is I'm not going to animorph this. I'm not going to animorph okay. Napoleonic War. I it's, don't want to lose it, another day. <laughs> like, the, oh, okay. So I I, I don't want to put the curse upon you. Like I am not. I'm not ADHD. I don't. I don't have hyperfixation, but I'm very curious about when I get curious people about something. People can fixate like, people. You can fixate yeah, 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 and like, you can be curious, and these are all human stuff, which actually brings right, right, right. Like, but like it doesn't. It, yeah. So, it, it, so like, yeah, but like it, it's not not normal. Like it just it just happens sometimes. Napoleon, like in history, history specifically has been doing that to me. Like I'm not just doing just Napoleon. Like I'm studying other parts of history too because it's just fascinating. I agree. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, hardcore but I do history, want to by the way, shout outs. Uh, oh, heck yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Plus, podcast. I would say, if if you guys like history podcasts, like I said, Mike Duncan, he does the Revolutions podcast. Uh, it's phenomenal. And he also did History of Rome. Um, but I can really recommend the Revolutions podcast because it's just so good. Um, but the uh, Hospital had a question. He says, am I a, a Masonic? Masana fan, one of the marshals, and then 
I, I want to give my short list of my preferred marshals because uh, <laughs> I, I went I went through all of them. So uh, the one I ultimately sorry to go I'm going to go with first because I'll probably have more than one Napoleon arm, Napoleonic army in the next how many years I'm alive, which decades. Um, so Ney is my my go to right now. But and I apologize, I'm going to butcher these French names. Uh, Ajaru was another interesting one to me because he he was just pretty much like a pirate. He just looted. He was lucky. He was bold, but he was like he just took it. But he too too far, too far. M- he's like yeah, he was he was like a pirate. Um, uh, Murat, um He was like the cavalry guy. Became the king of Naples. Uh, there was Odina, uh, which I think Napoleon said like yeah, he was brave, but he wasn't bright or something. <laughs> but like like I'm and I kind of related because he was just kind of like lucky. <laughs> <laughs> to be like, like, and I kind of feel that. Uh, Lefavre, uh, I really liked him because he just hates politicians. <laughs> like Base. that's why I attached to with him. Yeah, uh, fuck pol- politicians. Nobody who wa- nobody who wants to rule should be able to. Yeah, uh, 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 Lannis, I liked him. Uh, he was he was a solid character. Uh, just there wasn't enough to really hook me there. And then uh, I am going to study this other one. Not he never really led a corps. He was the chief of staff, Berthier. Uh, I really am a fan of him just because like the organizational skills to make that mass work at that level and with that type of technology of like people riding horses to communicate like crazy cool but yeah i mean there we go communication really this is even pre morse code like it's, yeah 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 Mar- 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 is a good one but the thing i don't like about Mara is at the end when he just was too much for himself that's what turns me off about Mara right now mm-hmm. and like i said miff you if you want if you want to anamorph more let me know <laughs> <laughs> no, I animorphed on World War One there for a spell, like really hard. I'm like, yeah, there's a period I walked. Well, I mean, hardcore, hardcore history. Yeah, like it that, did it. That yeah, it was. was I was, I was listening to hard, the the World War One series and hardcore history, but then I had to like trust but verify, and that's usually where yeah. like I get into trouble. Where I'm like, I'm like, okay, like I trust you. You like you've added your stuff, but like now I need to, and I'm just like, and I lost months to to fixating on uh, on World War One. Um, for sure yeah no uh, so um i don't remember where the segue or the tie-in was because i wanted you to really talk about this and stuff um uh, you want me, you want me to do my little rant right now about, about corporations no let me get this out of the way real quick sure here gotcha. um so adhd and genetics um it, it, uh, a big part to to note about like well i guess i can plug my own charity thing that's going on right now hey it's meptober Absolutely. everybody um now that like only 10 of you are watching and like a bunch of you like uh uh left because of uh napoleonic miniatures or like i didn't go anti-capitalist yet so like we're good there and i didn't like blackout talking about mass effect 3 i've actually been pretty tame tonight i've been i've 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 had like a couple jokes with you uh because mm-hmm. like our dynamic is fun and i swear mm-hmm. to god we would mm-hmm. fr- we'd have been homies in like high school or middle school and we'd have just oh like, hell yeah you know like um you, I don't know. We just there's like a kindredness of the of the spirits there that I vibe with. It, you know. Um, yeah. Well, you, you, despite differences on things, like the parts of us that I think to connect are like a really solid. And I can like see the world from yeah. your perspective too, where like I get where oh, we, we yeah. diverge on on these paths. You know, because at the end yeah, of the day, yeah. you're like, you know, live and let live is a is a is a pretty core belief of both of us. Yeah. I think yeah. you know, and and I think that's you know, like we might see some different angles on like what that all like encompasses but like when it gets right down to it like being able to like have a community and like do what you Mm -hmm. love and helping other people do what they love i mean that's that's a pretty great great axiom to like get along on you know oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) i mean and 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 just wanting people like the passions of people to be embraced and and you know um in i don't know like fueled you know i mean that's that's mm-hmm, dope mm-hmm. um so right now is 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 uh Meftober. it is 30 uh days it is spooky season it is where uh, i let the demons come out to exercise uh you know fitness joke ha 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 thank you for that one um but uh i'm not going as hard in the paint for this as rantathon and yet i can still feel that thing starting in me where eight thousand dollars isn't enough i gotta go to 12 right like i can still feel that in me so uh, please uh, tell everybody about this. It, unlike the Rantathon, you can donate any time you want. All the prizes that are available, uh, they are in giveaway form, so you donate. You have one entry regardless of how much or how little you donate. Um, 
obviously more is better, but like I believe mm. in equitability and the sort of like everyone gets to roll the die the same time, you know, like so. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, uh, it's online gambling if I let you buy extra entries. So, uh, you know. yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so there's right the capitalist coming back. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Uh, so it's a uh, you know, so there's there's a uh, you know, there's some. Uh, we are supporting to write love on her arms, which is, which is a, a mental health charity that focuses on depression, addiction, self injury, and suicide. Um, I wasn't going to do another marathon. I mentioned that I basically December to July is rantathon. I was in hiatus and to write love on her arms. Uh, one of their community managers emailed me and said, basically, thank you uh, for making a safe space on the internet for mental health. Uh, we want to send you something as a token of, of appreciation for like, you know, just championing mental health. Uh, and they said your candidness with your own mental health. Like they, they liked just how I was like candid with it and I was open about mm -hmm. it. Um, and so they sent me like, just like a t-shirt and like a little pamphlet. Um, and this was after I was like, this is bullshit. This is like a Nigerian prince sending me an email, right? Nobody like thinks that what I'm doing is... <laughs> you know, worthy of sending me shit. Uh, so, like, I, I vetted him first, and, like, I, I, like, sent an email back after, like, there was a legitimate Twitter account and stuff. I'm like, okay, this is a real mm -hmm. thing. But you could be saying that, and anyone can make a Twitter account. Um, mm -hmm. So I did some vetting, emailed them back, and then and then eventually I, I gave them my address and stuff. And then I got the little thing. And I looked into them, trust but verify, and their mm -hmm. story just, like, was a gut punch. Because this last year, um, I mean, I, I haven't been doing great for several years. I've always known I was depressed. Uh, obviously, I have trauma. I can look on my body at the cigarette burns and the stab wounds and stuff like that. Like, I, duh. Okay, like, it's not hard to know that about myself. Um, but I didn't have, like, a word for it all. Um, I'd been to counseling, but that was mostly so that my, my family could be like, see, we told you you were fucked up, Andrew. Um, and there was nothing really like great came of it. I struggled with insomnia for a decade and everyone was treating insomnia like it was a condition rather than a symptom of all the other stuff that's wrong, you mm. know? And so that anyway, um, this last year is pretty hard. Uh, I got diagnosed with uh, CPTSD, which is uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, this is what a soldier would have to get actual disability from uh, persistent combat exposure or being in a facility where, like, yeah, you're not at an active soldier, but it's being bombed all the time or you're you're having to, like, go deal with IUDs. Improvised explosive device. IEDs, sorry, not the contraception. Um, <laughs> that could be its own war zone. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> um, and... Uh, uh, and in my case, from uh, experiencing prolonged periods of child abuse and stuff like that. So it's like, um, and then uh, ADHD, which I had suspected, and uh, bipolar too, which I was in denial about for a very, very long time because I always knew I was depressed. But I also knew my mom, a source of many aforementioned cigarette burns on my body and stuff, uh, was bipolar one. And uh, I didn't. I'm like, I'm depressed, but I'm not my mom depressed. You know, it was this, like, demon, this thing I was afraid of for a very, very long time. And so when I got diagnosed with that stuff, I kind of tailspun uh, mm -hmm. starting in January. It, it was diagnosed last December, and, and then there's just um, ADHD I kind of knew about, and so I focused on that for a long time. And a lot of my conversations, you go back and watch the rant casts and stuff, I'm talking about ADHD a lot because I don't want to talk about – it's okay to say I have trauma. Mm-hmm. When I say I have CPTSD, it means my brain's been fucking rewired and I will never get rid of that. I can learn coping mechanisms to deal with my trauma. I can be more productive and healthy in some of my things. And so, but my mm -hmm. brain's, Cam, it's different now. You know, it's like you talk about like, you know, you can learn better stuff, better behaviors, but it's, you know, that's just something that I always hold. It's just something I will always have, like any other scar. My my brain has a scar. You know, that's what C mm -hmm. CPTSD isn't genetic or PTSD isn't genetic. That's one that's inflicted on you, uh, which really that whatever. 
but it was the bipolar that sucked and the medication process was really rough it's still really rough i just i have mm-hmm. a, i have a dose for five days right now on my bipolar med and if i stop taking it the floodgates open because it's like all about like sort of serotonin and reuptake of serotonin so, so oh like, yeah yeah those the, and those uh medications can be very very brutal because it's like it mess, it's messing with the chemistry of that is you in, in I, I had hit a level of equilibrium with my depression now mm-hmm. on a prolonged period i wasn't good but i had hit a equilibrium in my day to day and then there's like here's 20 milligrams of this okay well like, like up that to 30 but then give you five of this okay you know what like we're gonna switch your adhd med entirely and the thing that they don't tell you about bipolar depression is uh, it doesn't really actually respond to traditional antidepressants, especially the SSRI or the SNRI in, uh, uh, medications, which are kind of the predominant ones prescribed for depression these days. Um, it sucks with them, in fact, because what will happen is you maintain your depression, but your hypomania goes out of whack or your mania goes out of whack. Mm-hmm. And so I was simultaneously experiencing depression and a hypomania when I'm used to having like one hypomania spike every three months, two months, I didn't know what it was, but I, I know there's a time when I, I jack up my credit card and buying riot points, uh, for mm. league of legends. I know that there's a time when I would just suddenly buy a $600 fucking Castlevania stra- statue that would sit on my, okay. I know that there's a night when I would just feel some kind of way and try to blow up an interpersonal relationship on Twitter with some fucking person. Like, like, I, I got that. I know that there was a point in time when I couldn't go drinking with Molly because I knew I would get into a fist fight with somebody if I did. You know, it. Mm-hmm. I understood that I had this pattern of behavior, but with the medication, it threw me out of whack and I got into a really different place. I felt like I was losing my goddamn mind. Um, yeah. So your routine was just gone of, of how you were my, currently. Yeah. Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cope none of my coping mechanisms were working anymore because they had been like the, you know, like the, the Scooby-Doo moment of like, ha, it's this all along, you know, like old man bipolar, (laughs) you know? And I'm like, ah, shit. Um, and, and with the ADHD, like there are certain coping mechanisms that you do kind of unconsciously when you're conscious about the thing that causes the like unconscious coping mechanism, you kind of lose that one. Hmm. It it's, I, I do anyway. Um, and so this, this, they, they had reached out to me and, uh, with the di- depression focus and what I had saw in their story, I'm like, I got to do something for them. It, w- it just felt like uh, there was a harmony to it or a serendipity mm-hmm. to it that I embraced. So Meftober has become, uh, a charity thing as well. Um, so the big one is events mini, uh, if you donate, uh, anytime throughout the entire month, uh, you click the little Vince option. You have to, I think it's 50 bucks. Uh, in one go again. The, none of them are time locked, like like the Meptober, or uh, sorry, like uh, like the Rantathon. You just donate when you feel like. I don't need to be live. Uh, you donate to that pretty great cause. Um, right underneath there, in the down there part, it shows the impact. Twenty five dollars helps eighty six people get reduced cost or free mental health care. Uh, mm-hmm. Twenty five bucks. So every little bit counts. If five of you give five bucks, you've helped eighty six people with i think something that affects everybody so yeah uh that's my spiel um and uh that brings me back to chuck moore is a serial killer uh because you're one of like five people i know who's pretty chill and together and i've always tried to wonder we were we were talking about a little bit like why daughters of cane why you know fitness and like when i meet people and this is part of my illness quite frankly is I get so used to like how I see the world from my perspective perspective that like, I just assume everybody is depressed. Everybody has this type of turmoil. Everybody has this, that, and the other thing. And I think it's easy to think people, people have, I think that we live in an era of anxiety. I think that millennials in particular have grown up in sort of an unprecedented tumultuous period, half online, Mm -hmm. half offline. You know, the, the, what's the, um, what's the fight club line? Like our, uh, you know, we have no great wars to prove ourselves. Our great war is a spiritual one. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I feel like that, like that kind of, you know, take what you will from, from, from the film and, you know, the type of edgelords that, 
enjoy but I, I always like that like little speech from tyler durden because i feel yeah. like there is this sort of like lost period right now i feel like millennials are kind of like a lost generation uh like a pivotal generation like my kids are all growing up 100 percent online you know and right and, and so like, and you and i grew up half off half off as right said. yeah half on half off yeah so like, my like kid... I, re- I remember the time still going out without a cell phone to ride bikes and jump dirt hills and then oh okay the sun's going down it's getting hard to see i need go to home. go home for gotta dinner. go home when it's dark out yeah and it was fine and, but i also even still remember like the, like our parents coping with that too like my mother whenever i got a cell phone all of a sudden she needed to know where i was i'm like mom a year ago you didn't care <laughs> now that i have it doesn't mean you need to use it right and, and there's and so i still have that thing where like um completely different from even like me and molly molly's five years younger than me I don't need my cell phone on me. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. it's a dopamine box, and I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but, like, yeah. I can, like, like, well, I couldn't get a hold of you. And I'm like, it, what's the big deal? Like, I'm so used to a period in, in, in my life where we didn't fucking have phones. I grew up poor. We didn't even have a house phone. You mm-hmm. saw me when you saw me. You talked to me at school. And if you really needed to get a hold of me, you had my neighbor's number. Yeah. You, you know, like, it, it was... And... and the idea of like my kids not being able to access the internet for school, they they couldn't do school right now without it. Right. And there was a period in time where we had to hand write in, uh, we had to hand write Cursive. our papers. And then <laughs> if you, if you, if you, you had to like, you do it in, in, uh, in pencil to make sure you didn't screw up and you could erase it. And then you go back over an in ink cause you, you had to turn it in an in ink. Right. And and then I remember going to college, and it's like, oh no, typed only. I had a keyboard even, in class. Well, it was before college. We because then we had to go to the computer lab. Yeah, yeah, cause I, cause I, yeah. I, I I didn't have a typewriter. I was I was like the last year that or the first year that didn't do typewriting, but we had a keyboarding class. But like you know, the year before me, like my sister actually did typewriting. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but I know what you mean too, and it's just like, oh yeah, we just do it online. But even even more so now, like the one thing that I have on my computer for like chrome as an extension is grammarly because my grammar i type i i type stream of conscience like it's just how i, I type mean, based i agree with it yeah yeah so <laughs> obviously if you're sending like an email or something people unless you really know me yeah, you're gonna be like you're not gonna get what the, the hell is this yeah yep no nope, right so it. like grammarly is a great tool that just auto says fix this you can just click boom 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 boom. so like, now there's that on top of the fact they're always online it's just like I, but I don't know what that means. Well, <laughs> Does that I mean, mean they like this isn't a, this is I don't think this this I'm not going for like a value statement here, by the way. Like yeah, good, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, bad. Yeah. Every sure. generation oh, yeah. has their struggle, their fight, their thing. I just the the assertion is that I think, you know, millennials, I think you feel like a little bit I think we feel like a little bit of a lost generation. Especially if you're what I call the um the keyboarding and busy basic era. If you had both a keyboarding class or typewriting class and a busy basic class in the same college mm-hmm. in the same high school curriculum or something you're one of us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you're that you're that like beta test alpha test like first run millennial and and it's <laughs> you know like equal carrying equal parts of the baggage from from like gen x that sort of like chip on the shoulder that gen x had and the like digitization of the gen z that you know like it, yeah go ahead and it's very interesting too because i look at even within like my very close circle of friends like non-warhammer friends um like you look at like take two of us like so one has very much embraced the modernization much more as the younger generation is like he he you'll see him always on his phone like i said this is a judge of it he's always on his phone he's deep into technology always doing that sort of stuff and like he's always trying to like keep up the date with stuff and then like there's me who took the opposite direction who like i'm studying philosophy and histories from the older generation not full like you know like okay i'm on instagram and, and twitter and like then t- tiktok came out like sorry i'm no i'm too i'm too old <laughs> like i don't care i don't care anymore <laughs> but like you know it's just like but like that's also the split of our generation like we even with our generation we split because they're you know we're both both trying to attach to one of the ways of life that's developing well, it, it, well, or face, existed facebook basically we got all of our parents on facebook and so facebook oh, became that's the realm. Of, facebook became the realm of our parents right like the it's the there boom. was a time if yeah, you're young there's a time on facebook where you had to have a college 
uh, email address only. Yes. Okay? And yes. you could play. And you play video games. Yes. It was great. It was yeah, great. I, I was in. The, I I had a beta. I, I got a. I got a beta invite uh, when I was at UW Eau Claire from my mm-hmm. friend in my poetry forums from the when yep. AOL <laughs> had uh, AOL had like chat rooms and stuff. We had a. We we made an Angel Fire website. For one of the poetry. oh Angel AOL. Fire, I miss from, Angel Fire. Oh, there's such feelings there. <laughs> yeah, we had the uh, so we had a uh, sorry Geo Cities get fucked. Um, no, it was uh, a <laughs> no. We had um, we had a uh, uh, we had like I used to go to like a couple different like AOL chat rooms, predominantly like a lot of music based ones, so a lot of like goth punk uh, stuff, predominantly goth mostly, um, and uh, and like poetry ones, and then like I connected with a, like common people from like both the the goth and punk stuff and the poetry ones and so there's like six of us that were always on those those same ones and so we made like an angel fire site uh yeah. and so we had this little like i'm still friends with them on fucking facebook by, by the way our little, yeah. like, poetry yeah. club. Um, that's cool. and so i got a beta invite from from uh uh her name was felicia so i got a beta invite from from felicia to facebook but like again what happened is like millennials invited their parents oh you gotta get on facebook you gotta get on facebook and then like instant regret and we all fucking fled <laughs> facebook <laughs> and, yeah. and that's where you get the instagram and the twitters like so it, yeah. it's it, and and what you were saying about tiktok i can't do tiktok yeah I, it's it I, overwhelms it's, it's, me the ui fucking like i i, I mean it's all, a perfect dopamine like a sh- that short burst like it's trying to like i and i hate that that it's it's model has infiltrated instagram a little bit because mm-hmm. like they do like they they push that a little bit more now. It's just like, I don't, I can't like, I just, well, even, fa- <laughs> even Facebook has it going on um, where like, they've got their reels oh, yeah. or whatever. Facebook oh, e- even or... actually YouTube, they have shorts now and it's just like, and it, I'm not, I don't knock anybody who does enjoy or does it to like, you know, boost their business, go more power to you. But like, I look yeah, at that. Secure, I'm the just... bag. secure the bag. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> There's a reason why I have also like Napoleon at books over there. You know? <laughs> Cause like I'd slow it down. Let me just digest this at my own pace. Let me. It's 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 it TikTok overwhelms me. Um, it like is, yeah. I love Twitter. Twitter is the exact like dopamine box my my, my like mind prison I need. Right. Is at my pace. I scroll. I'm like ha ha like thumb. Ha-ha. Oh, if somebody is wrong on the internet, I'm gonna fucking mega thread you. You know, like it's the exact <laughs> thing I need. I love Twitter. It is my mm-hmm. jam. Like it forces it, me, it, it forces me to curate my thoughts, which I need. Um, mm-hmm. But like, if it's like again, if they're like someone's really wrong, I'm like you about to get mega threaded. But like, you know, like yeah. tonight, um, to to go come up with the uh, the tweet for going live tonight, I had to curate it. I had to curate. It. So it's one thing because I know nobody's gonna read a thread of hey, come watch the show uh, tonight. You know, and so mm-hmm. I, I, it's the again, it's the exact mind prison dopamine box I need. Um, yeah, Instagram feels too fake to me um and that's it's, not go ahead go ahead yeah yeah no no i mean you're, you're right there's a there's definitely like a weird fakeness to it and like it the only reason i went to instagram so like i, I like twitter the best i have facebook because it tells me when people's birthdays are toxic. and i have family on there yeah Tw- yeah twitter gets bots but twitter is nice because it's open and like there is like those subcultures like uh, we're in the war gaming especially the you know the age of sigmar twitter but like i still peruse like they were talking earlier like the fighting game twitter or like the video game twitter. like there's a lot of that and you can just explore it and, and to your to your liking yes. and adjust yeah, it you that go way into these, those little the, the problem is i feel like they're fucking with twitter a little bit too much like i mean everyone that all, all social media gets tweaked like that it's, yeah it's weird, no yeah. like circles right now i i haven't made my circle i'm in one circle and like i in the like weird validation ego part of my brain i'm like yeah they like me and then, <laughs> and I'm trying to avoid the thought because I know for a fact I haven't made any. Fu- I haven't made a circle, and I'm like, I know yeah. for a fact most of my friends haven't. But there's that small part of your stupid fucking oh, I... brain that goes, do do they all have like circles and nobody likes me enough? So I'm here's this one circle. Uh, this one here... circle. Go ahead, go ahead. I was like, here's what circles are to me as a Twitter user. I don't know what those are, and I move on. There's been <laughs> one update recently, one update on Twitter that I said, oh. This is for me, and that's allowing me to do mixed media on the same tweet. So I can have here's my Warhammer, here's my Tay Tay GIF. We're done, moving on. Yeah, oh, <laughs> like, it's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, a hundred percent. But yeah, but like circle. I I don't know. I, like I don't know where circles came from. I don't know what they are. I don't care. If someone adds me to a circle, I don't know what that means. 
Interesting. Uh, That's fantastic. <laughs> like I said, like, I, I don't, don't care. I, I, I don't, don't care. care. I don't. If you put me in a lie detector task and, and you ask me, like, do you care about, I'll be like, no. But then there's just every now and then the wrong time of night. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, why am I not in Chuck Moore's circle? Aren't we friends? Because Chuck know? Morris knows what circles are. I, right? And that's what I know <laughs> with my logical brain. I'm like, yeah. oh, most of my friends don't fucking have one. Uh, but, I, then the, but then there's like, well, but is there this secret secret club that you're not? You know, and, and that's uh, that's neither here nor there. That's really not where, yeah. where I was going. I actually, like, I adore Twitter. You, you can... Uh, mm-hmm. Pry my Twitter from my cold dead hands. You know? <laughs> um, like, it's the, just, just going to be me and the and the porn bots in 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 the hellscape <laughs> that comes yeah. after this. And I'm gonna and I and most of what I love about Twitter is like shouting into the void anywhere, anyway. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if it's robots liking my shit or not. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Like every once in a while, it's like I get a new like oh I got a new follower. I'm like you're not a real lady. <laughs> you're a porn robot. Okay, yeah. whatever. But or actually, like, the only or, reason... no, it's like NFT bots. I was getting a bunch of NFT bot followers for a while. Oh, there. were you? And then I started getting um, and then I started getting like weird like um like uh uh like techie followers, like a bunch of like community management stuff, uh bots that were like very obvious like community management bots and stuff. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah. Because I'd see like one, I'd say dream in a post. And then I'd have like you know a dream plant is followed you or I'm like, what the fuck is this? oh you're a robot you know yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, what the fuck was it anyway go on you had a you had a tangent right? oh I, I was to say like with uh, the only reason I went to Instagram this is like the only reason why I think like if you're in a specific thing you need to find what the social media is so fitness is on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like and not not just like the bodybuilders and that sort of stuff like the powerlifting every single one's on on Instagram. Oh, is, so if you gonna... if you like so like you sometimes have to have to deal with like I wouldn't be on Instagram if it wasn't for the fact that I wanted to be part of the fitness community. I, I, now, yeah, I know that goes both ways because like how many people do you go to tournaments and it's like and and I think Age of Sigmar lives on on Twitter, which is what what's kind of like bizarre to me that like uh, Warcom has such a, a higher presence on Instagram. It makes sense. They're a model mm-hmm. company. The aesthetics, the the yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense to me. Uh, you talked about like fitness and bodybuilding. Um, uh, I'm gonna say models in a double entendre here, like Instagram models, influencers, mm-hmm. and Warhammer models. There's a harmony there that makes sense for Instagram, but the Warhammer community is on Twitter. You right. go to fucking Warhammer tournament. It's all about, oh, I want to tag you on the Twitter post and take the picture of the game. And, you know, and... well, it's because it, 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 Twitter allows us to be community based, whereas Instagram, you're mostly posting about your experience. If you go to a tournament, like I'll put it up like here's my experience and I can tag a few people, but there's not going to be a conversation. Whereas in oh, Twitter, oh, that that's the way the threads work. You can get a little conversation going, not necessarily the best conversation, but better yeah, you than get threads most other the social threads, medias. But then once you once you like. Because it's 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 the I think it's that that balance of curation plus engagement. Mm-hmm. It you get like that focused engagement, but then you can also like curate it, and you can you can like you said you can bounce around like what the hell is FGC Twitter doing right now? Or my favorite day so far of the year, and I am so sorry, everybody. I don't celebrate people's deaths kind of as a rule. I'm still not even a rest and piss Rush Limbaugh guy, even though I'm a I'm I don't want to hurt anybody. Hey, 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 hang on. Aren't you okay? I don't yeah. want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'm probably, and I don't like purity tests, but I'm probably further left than than most people. Um, you know, anarchy has a certain kind of, uh, you know, whatever. It's got some stereotypes. Uh, uh, conservatives hate us because we're liberals, uh, and uh, leftists hate us because we ruined leftism. So, uh, you know, everybody <laughs> hates an anarchist. It's fine. I've, I have, I owned this. It's. It was to the point where I didn't even it openly admit I was an anarchist for like the first year of my podcast because I'm like I don't know if anyone even knows what the fuck that is. They still think it means like <laughs> Mad Maxine Hellscape. Like they don't know about like mutual aid networks and community mm-hmm. and grass. It, whatever. I digress. Um. So like I say that, uh, to point out that like I'm probably further left than most people. I don't like purity tests, but I'm still not like a celebrate people's deaths even if they sucked person. Uh, you know, I didn't get out there and like slander McCain when he died, and I'm not like rest and piss oh. Rush Limbaugh, um, blah blah blah. And I say all that to say this: the day the Queen died. Uh, was... Okay, perfect. I was, I was gonna say you're you're Irish. I had a Guinness Irish that Twitter. Day. All right, was amazing. Yes. 
if it was you were fantastic. if Irish Twitter and then like and, and then like Irish Twitter was cross pollinating with like Black Twitter and like <laughs> and like and, and like Indigenous Twitter and like. And you just like the like weird. It was like a, like a, you know like, like Canadian friends, a bunch of my American friends, and obviously like British friends. And like I, mm-hmm. as a Games Workshop player, fan, yeah. community content yeah. creator, you have to be cognizant of like a huge UK audience. Okay, I know liberals, conservatives, progressives, whatever you want to like, yeah, everyone yeah, all that. across on on Twitter follow me. Okay, I do believe mm-hmm. that that there are reasonable folks and all axioms you just you 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 focus on the issues you focus on and that kind of pulls you in a direction okay whatever right some people happen to think borders are a real thing like that physically exist and i don't and whatever we're gonna disagree yeah um but like and some people just really hate taxes and like i get it like you yeah know, taxes suck I, I get it i i had to like yeah. i mean i got handed a bunch of money because i own my house and there's like here have 700 dollars i'm like what really i'm just like all right um <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you get married, we'll give you another thousand. What? Really? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you guys are bad with money, but okay. <laughs> uh, some people just like hate taxes. Like, am I just gaming the system? Am I just good at math? I don't know. <laughs> um, so, so uh, it, anyway, um, like I, I have like I have to be co- I had to be cognizant on that day, and I lost followers because like I, that reflex retweet, and I'm just like, oh, I gotta undo that one. Um, cause I was just like, fucking, and, and like, and I don't know what the political ideologies are necessarily of my like UK friends because their pol- political landscape is so much more different from America's. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Like they actually know the difference between a leftist and a liberal. And over here I have to like wonder if it's worth explaining it to somebody I'm about to argue with. <laughs> 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 like, like I hate liberals and I'm like, wait a second. I hate liberals too because to me it's a neo cap uh, it's a it's a it's a neo capitalist liberal or uh, sorry a neo liberal capitalist is what I'm talking about and I'm like are you talking about that or do you mean like uh, like somebody who just wants equality <laughs> 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 but like I said with with on that day I had no idea which one of my UK fans were not because I've had conversations like that were anti capitalist with people who posted stuff about how sad they were that the Queen died and I'm like wait a second I thought you were an anti capitalist and you're sad about the queen's death, and I'm like, oh god, I have no idea what's going on. Ah, <laughs> like I just like, <laughs> but but and yet it was it was it was just like it was, it was just like I watched a bunch of my like people I consider to be le- legitimate friends and stuff like that who were sad, and I'm like, but meanwhile I'm over here watching someone tap dance or a fucking river dance in dance. front of the yeah, god another one bites the dust. another one bites the dust in front of the fucking Buckingham Palace. And, like, if I could get a superpower, the one superpower I want is, like, if I bust into an Irish jig, the homies just, like, pfft, and just, like, show up. Okay. <laughs> like, like, in that scene in, uh, fucking at the beginning of, uh, of Emperor's New Groove when he starts dancing. Oh, yeah, And, like, yeah, everything yeah. just breaks. I want that as a superpower. Just, like, where, like, I could just, and not a flash mob. No, I want, like, choreography. Okay, <laughs> I want choreography. I want the scenery to change around me. I want there to be a soundtrack. Nobody knows where it's fucking coming from. It just makes sense for the scene. That's my superpower. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna save the world with that. But like, you bet your ass if like Molly starts to fight yep. with me, like Andrew, you didn't take the garbage out. I'm just like, <laughs> and then just like everyone shows up and like the fucking walls fall away, and I'm just like dancing. Like, oh my god, I want that so bad. <laughs> Oh boy! (laughs) Look, as long as you live your life with some passion and love for your fellow humans, I kind of don't care where people fall. I have my ideas and my opinions, and I'm going to articulate them as best I can. But I don't conversate, conversate to convince others. I do so to understand others and to show others that I understand what i think i i it's for me it's like a, it's that internal thing i just want people to not think i'm a fucking idiot with how i arrived at where i got mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so no, i hear you yeah um okay but like how can you be an american and also love the crowd i don't know i feel like it's american i to be very anathema. It, it feels very american <sighs> to hate the monarchy it's well it's 
Didn't it we, should like, do be. A war it should or something like that. Yeah, well, we won a war for it. Uh, <laughs> let's be clear. <laughs> um, There's something with like tea and like uh, you know no taxation without representation. I thought there was like a whole fucking thing. And the and what's unique about like the American Revolution is the people who revolted were like rich folk. And a lot of other revolutions. And it was because of, like, their taxes on, like, alcohol. Like, and, I mean, yeah, look at the whiskey and, revolution with Washington. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, you enjoy uh, something good to take, yeah. A lot of other revolutions tend to be, like, I can either starve to death or I can fight for change. That tends right. to be when revolutions happen. And, uh, like, the American Revolution, uh, and again, not that it's, like, utterly unique. I'm sure in the longevity of history you can find, like, uh, check out the Haitian Revolution. Actually, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, and and, uh, and and um, and uh, a lot of the um, uh, Caribbean like there's various like Caribbean revolutions. Yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah. Pretty yep. dope and stuff like with Haiti and yeah, uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. There's a lot of like really cool ones there with uh, with the old like uh, sugarcane mills and yeah. Yep. So, so there's yep. like a lot of um, but the point is is like in terms of the scope of human history, the 260 thousand years our 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 brains or our dna has existed mu much in the same state it has for about two hundred sixty thousand years um most of the revolutions tend to be like pick how you die yeah and it's 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 very fascinating but like and this is where i suggest i do the revolutions podcast and just see how they all feed and weave in like this one single strand all the way through even to the americans but the americans were different because we we're so far away we're so spread out and like even still like like you know like the, we have a lot that, of land uninhabited in america yeah like uh, I, I, the, the the fun fact is and like i've heard people say like you know america is the experiment and like we still are in a way because like we are still like with, uh, sure like, there's a lot of like oligarchy shit that we need to get the fuck out of our system but Absolutely. um that traces it's like the richest most of the richest families in america trace their money back to the fucking british empire yeah, yeah, it's but the but still like the there is like a uniqueness that is America. I'm not saying that makes us the best or whatever. Like, sure, like no, America there one, there is a like, uniquely American experience. Uh, no, right, like because we have we have so much land. We're so spread out. We're you know we have we touch two oceans, um, it, and it just makes it so much. We more... only have two borders to worry about. Like, in, yeah, in and any... pr to be honest, those two places are pretty chill. <laughs> Like in, in, a it's, it's, in a global sense, yes. Yeah, in a, in a global sense, like it's we not have that far bad. more control over Mexico than they they do over us. Like the drug cartels and stuff like that are essentially an, yeah you know, uh, answering to American capitalist uh, agendas, not their own whims per se. You know, right, like, right. So yeah, yeah. But like, but like, so, yeah, and, and like, then every now and then, like we send the CIA to like just like torpedo a south uh, south or Central American country, which like I yeah, get rid of that one. I mean, yeah. yeah. Again, we yeah, have far yeah. more influence over our borders than like other developed nations have over theirs. And, you know, it's, it's my right, own. Like, so, I'm not saying good bad. It's you know, there's... yeah. Like, it's it's hard to just like good bad. It's yeah, but um, I, I, still, I, as yeah, a it's rule, a, a I think it's bad to like destroy a country's infrastructure on a whim. But okay, very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the the only other large country out there that has cities and lots of like land like that is russia and they're communist so we're different so like it's a weird experiment well communist i i, I mean that's getting a little weird um i don't know how to describe that they are uh like communist political system with a with a capital c but they're not yeah i guess i guess that's good one, of the, one yeah. of the things that uh, um uh so like left uh all right I, i'm gonna need all the conservatives to leave uh chat gang real quick here because I gotta have a, I, mean, I, I gotta have a. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like moderate conservative. Hang on, me get yeah, out. No, no, okay. you're fine, you're fine. I said in chat, gang. Uh, oh, okay. Lefties, I need to talk to y'all real quick. Uh, splitting hairs over communism and socialism, really hard to do when Daddy Marx oh, used them interchangeably. Okay. Oh God, yeah. So what you need to do is start to like to sort of like establish state communism or socialism versus like, like you know, sort of like socialist or communist principle. This is very important left lefties, because if we can't like fucking get on the same lexicon, the same like established terminology, we're just gonna keep fucking infighting and then somebody who's like really attractive 
relatively well well read they work out a bunch and they play warhammer like chuck moore is just going to infiltrate all your communities and like dazzle you with how much history he's read and then like poison <laughs> get you into stoicism and, and then like poison pill you by talking about like russia <laughs> sorry <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Now, every, everybody study a history. It's it's worth. And actually, it's actually this is interesting because like I I think I think I told you this once, Matt. And like I've definitely grown and changed on this because like the, the easy thing to say is history repeats itself. And I know I've said that on various levels, and that's very wrong. But what I I've adjusted that slightly. I don't believe history repeats itself. But I do believe history rhymes. That's where I'm at currently with things. If I may. The yeah, last please. 200 years of history, right? History doesn't repeat. The, the scope of humanity, again, 260,000 years with our DNA largely the same as it, is, as it is now. No, sorry, the brains. Our DNA has been about 300,000 years. 300,000 years with, uh, with uh, Homo sapiens sapiens DNA as it exists. Go ahead. Wikipedia this. I'll allow you. Um, <laughs> and about 260,000 years of the human brain being as it is now. That's a shit ton of human history, okay? That's a fuck ton. Even if you go mm-hmm. off of, like, Jesus Christ, uh, 2,000 years, or you choose 1,200 for Viking, what, pick a civilization. Wherever mm-hmm. you want to fucking draw the line, that is a minority percentage, less than 1% in any, in any modicum of measurement of the totality of human existence. Mm-hmm. Like... To even assert that it repeats itself when you're just looking at a percent, you know? Yeah, like we like we only can see the parts where it's written down within. But often by the winners, often by the dominant uh, yeah, status yeah. quo. For, for sure. But like, why, so that's why, why, it's like, why it, is it, it called rhymes. a Napoleon complex? Why is Napoleon short in the minds of everybody right now? Right. One, because human memory yeah. is imperfect. But two, because he got he lost. Britain won. twice. <laughs> you can't trust yeah, it, history, kind of in a in a because histrionics. It, it history. You got to be leery of history too. Oh, absolutely. But like I said, I think that's like if it, like if you're going to study history, like you can't like I said, and like it really, it's like there's not histories. Like there's not like you can break it down to like the Napoleonics, the War of the Roses, the, the American Revolution, the Civil War, whatever you want. But like you need to study just. Start from when um, Romulus and Remus were, were sucking the, the, the tea to the wolf and come to now. Like, you need to follow that whole thing through to kind of like, if I honestly, may, <laughs> if, if, yeah. I, if I may interject, but you need to read the perspectives of those that lost. Yeah, you need. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't just take one side like you need to like, and the, and like I'm need studying to... Napoleonics. I'm reading Napoleon's side. I'm also going to read the, the Prussian and Austrian and like the the. The, the, the coalition side like i need yeah you're right big pictures big pictures everybody and and, <laughs> and and keeping in mind like uh human and they memory. always inbred yes hotspur right everyone inbred right. for and, the yeah. leaders so i remember was just that. gonna go i was just gonna like, uh, tie it all the way back to uh the continuity of consciousness uh your brains lie to you <laughs> so people oh, who God, recorded yeah. history uh were lying to themselves uh, unconsciously yeah, and then you find those gaps even like within like our it, recent right now, history within who yeah, stormed where, the fucking capital on January sixth? Was yeah, it and it's Ant- just like Antifa? And it, it's like and then you start going. It's just like okay, yeah. Then like you don't know, and they're not going to tell tell you. And you, you know who knows when you'll find out. Like, ugh. and like there's so many there's gaps in like in ancient history, which is still within our our reach. Where it's like okay. um they wrote down this history 200 years after it happened. It's like, well, I, I, but it's the only thing we have to go off of. Re- record, so like you have to, it's record a tournament 20 days re- Record it on camera. Have some hire a, a photographer, uh, sorry, hire a documentarian crew uh, and make sure that they're told to preserve all the raw footage and not just like editorialize it. Okay. So it's just mm-hmm. like record the whole event when they go on your podcast and say what happened on an, on an event, 20 days later and oh, then God. play the raw footage just beside it and again I'll, I'll hook you up to a lie detector test while you like while you put your podcast on by you i mean me i'll do this 
And I will be factually <laughs> correct in my mind, telling you and recounting the whole events as I remember them. And then someone will play a tape directly beside me of everything. And I will be wrong. But I wasn't lying. Mm-hmm. And and that and that's twenty days. Twenty years. Two hundred. Like do you know how distorted things get? We don't have mm-hmm. close to a fragment of human history. And, and especially because, like, at least now, you can get that footage. <laughs> sure. Like, sure. Yeah, like, it's instead of just, I mean, uh, was it, was it the, the Vikings were all or, uh, oral tradition. Yeah, and, but Vikings. Uh, like, 100%. Like, when you say Viking, do you so. mean Scandinavian or the profession? Uh, Scandinavian, sorry. Um. Yeah, it was an oral tradition. Yeah. Like, okay, how did like? Well, but I mean, it's even all you got. even <laughs> Aristotle's like everything Aristotle essentially passed on was was oral tradition and Socrates and like all these sort of like mm-hmm. forefathers of, of of philosophy was all oral tradition and uh, right. And I uh, think they started writing stuff down. <laughs> uh, Socrates is like, yo, fuck the written word. That shit's ruining the oral tradition. Literally, oh, wait, it was. Who what who was is uh the one but it's like oh that's great takes notes Plato <laughs> yeah pl- yeah that's it it's... it was a plot, yeah uh, yeah uh-huh, yeah um, it's like, no it's, it, yeah it, it's it's interesting because um I don't know yeah that is a weird tangent we found I I love philosophy <laughs> but uh, but that's the thing oh, like, yeah, it's fun. is my uh I see I heard a Tool song once when I was young and there's a line it's called Third Eye um. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, the beginning of the live version on the Salival album, uh, instead of doing the whole thing where they do a Bill Hicks, uh, you know, Bill Hicks, one of the greatest comedians of all time, instead of doing mm-hmm. like a Bill, the Bill Hicks, like today a young man on acid realized that all ad- all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, um, blah 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 blah, and we're all the. Uh, we are the uh, imaginations of ourselves experiencing itself subjectively. Here's Tom with the weather. Like the the hill is how they like they go yeah. into it. Um and then in the live version it's think for yourself question authority. Um think for yourself question authority uh, authority and it's a, it's on a loop. And um and that that's one of my core memories in inside out. Mm. There's like an angry uh Jack Black Mephisto or not Jack Black um Lewis Black Mephisto like slamming in the core orb that says think for yourself question authority. And mm-hmm. um and I am, yes, chat gang, I am authority because I have a microphone and a camera on right now. So you need to think for yourself and question me, too. Um, everything <laughs> I've said is full. I'm full of shit. I am full, my I, I you can't trust me. My memory is imperfect. I think I'm pretty eloquent and intelligent, uh, but I'm a fucking idiot in the scope of 260,000 years of human existence. Oh, yeah. At least it's like it's like. This isn't like we're not we're not st- studying this like dedicating our lives to it. this is just it's fascinating to us and we're relaying the bits that we have in our head that could be mixed up with other it's, i yeah. just want people to be excellent to each other you know I yeah that's what it comes down to every single every single time just be good to your fellow human and, and animals and yeah, animals yeah you know cows have best friends really no i didn't know that yeah it makes me not want to eat cows ever again like and i cows just come... I, I have like a farm family background, no. like my grandpa and stuff like that. I'm like, mm. I, I see. I, I've I would I, still I, eat a turkey, that sort of though. stuff too. Because like Tur- turkeys are stupid. Well, uh, it's I not that. It's a... like they're fucking dinosaurs, and fuck you, get to evolve back into being a dinosaur again. No, you get eaten. So, I I will still eat a cow, but now that I know they have best friends, I know I got to take them out together together and eat both eat at both the same steaks. time. So. Yeah, <laughs> now you just every every burger is a is a fucking double quarter pounder or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I just gonna you. up that up. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> um, it's interesting because I haven't looked at the time in forever, and I just saw we're at two twenty, and I said two hours for neat. Um, what? Whenever you need to go. Oh, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm good too. Just chat. We. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm tell you what, I, I, I am curious. Uh, Age of Sigmar. Let's talk some Age of Sigmar finally. What the fuck is that? <sighs> so long ago, <laughs> long ago, long ago, there was this world. It's called, it's called the world that was. <laughs> okay. 
and and then and then from there there was th this race called the old ones and they created you the, are the, the joe the rogan to my bill burr by the way i, <laughs> I know i know <laughs> well it's like I'm, I'm waiting for you to just like interrupt me so i can do the uh uh uh, what's the meme uh, from The Incredibles? We get there when we get there. <laughs> what's Age of Sigmar? Well, you gotta start from the old ones. No, no, old, no, no. I, I know what age, I know what Age of Sigmar. You want to? Talk I, know, I know, I know, I know. You want to talk Age of Sigmar? Uh, I was gonna ask you questions about like toing and you know doing some. Oh, stuff we like we can't. I, I was just gonna give you some like some ad lib questions. Yeah, I think, go, but if you go have go some ahead. preset no, ones, no, no. I want please. your ad lib. No, no. I I like it when my guests ask me questions. It's I'm so. Uh, I don't know. It's just go ahead. Because you, you're, you're a solid interviewer. So the one thing I've been kind of uh, looking at lately, because it's like, you know, I, I love that I'm the best interviewer rap. in Warhammer. I'm just, you know. I uh, mean, you are. Let's go there. I'll say it. I'll say it. Because, boom. hey, whatever. Like I said, we're, <laughs> we're just two idiots with microphones right now. Yep. Um, so the one thing I've been kind of interested in is, because like I'm writing, I, I kind of for a while lost the love of writing lore for you know like about my Tayrathi character and stuff and like i'm kind of getting back into re-reestablishing re that love of narrative which is just like integral to me and i kind of like did you, separate you from still, a little bit still, i'm sorry I, I tapped out for a while there yeah. are you still doing the Tayrathian invitational like you're you know like i i i am doing it this year it's going to be warhammer fantasy battles because i've fallen in love with that and it be, gives me an excuse to take the to soul yourself, it's fine yep Oh. And, and like I've gotten other people into it. I'm going to take the soul of Tayrathi because Tayrathi was a reincarnation in the mortal realms. Okay. So there's like open space for me to put her as some sort of very my very very minor character. I'm going to make lore for her for the old world. Very slim, not as much as Sigmar, but like I'm going to carry it through and figure out how to do that. But all right. So the other thing, yeah, you, you ran out of lore and uh, yeah. Out. So one thing that's been fascinating to me. I did it once before, but I'm doing it more. It's like, what would I look like right now? as a war gamer in my shelves if like i said the, the most easy example is what if tayrath what if i fell in love with sylvaneth first instead of daughters of cain for sigmar what would tayrathi look like there how would that change like and that sort of stuff like what would the story be then so like I, i'm thinking about doing like not actually like making it my true main storyline but doing like a what if like a marvel what if type thing fantastic. for her as a character fantastic so i'm curious for you so if it wasn't death, where do you think, like, say death, however you need to get it out of there, you hate death or it doesn't exist, whatever you need to do to get out of the, the, the normal psyche of that, where do you think Mephisto would be? In where do you think, like, you, your essence would be as far as an army or, like, a, an alliance within, like, the setting that we love? It, it, it's, it's, it's a difficult... I, I'm going to answer your question, but I want to, like, uh, get some caveats out the way. Sure, sure. Because I, I do feel like my love of, again, horror and spookiness and death and all that stuff is, like, is, is a through line in a bunch of stuff. Um, right. You got to keep in mind, like, I, like playing Castlevania on the NES had me primed to look for certain stuff. And, and uh, mm -hmm. watching my mom's boyfriend, OD, on heroin when I was, like, six years old gave me a close brush with death to where I was, like... I like it that got in me, you know, and I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I kind of did the Batman thing, you know, where, uh, uh, you know, like I took m one of my early fears and then I just like I made it my power the way, uh, you know, he did with bats and I did that with death. And so you gotta keep in mind that there's we're, we're kind of like we're unscrewing the core. Essence we have to of like pull, we have to yeah, pull yeah. out like this this pretty significant thing or have it still there. But just take like a weird left turn, okay? So I just want to like yeah. address that real okay. quick, okay? Uh, yeah, um, I understand. Okay, um, <laughs> kicker, uh, it'd be Skaven or or, or Dark Elves. Uh, they were the okay. other two battle, and I'm just gonna take a pure like like material position because they were mm -hmm. the two other uh, uh, army books I owned at that same time. I had the Undead book, and I had started. Uh, I had started um, collecting Undead. My friend Sam got me a, a Skeleton Archer Chariot from the Army Book mm -hmm. Undead days. Hang on a second. I uh, Speaking of uh, manic uh, depression, uh, uh, hypomania phases, and buying my entire childhood back. <laughs> um, this is it. This is the, the first book I owned. There you go. Warhammer. Um, nice. And I remember, and I thought it was a fucking fantasy. I was getting worried. 
And I'm like, it had the magic cards at the back of it, right? And uh, I started flipping in here, and I'm like, oh, no. Uh, I ordered the one book where the magic cards aren't there, and I'm insane. Nope, they are! Ah! They're there, they're yeah, there. Like, I thought I'd started to, to hallucinate it. I was I was <laughs> so convinced. Um, yeah, so um, the other two, two books I had bought uh, were... Uh, well, I, I didn't own Skaven. Sam did, but I wanted it, and Sam picked Skaven, so that had to be his thing, and so I bought the Dark Elves right, book. Right, So, I, I mean, you're looking at Mephisto becomes a Skaven player or a Dark Elves Or player. a Dreadlord, yeah. Um, the goth phase is mighty with... Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, if we keep, we, inta- we keep the rest of me intact. Like, you know, I just... I have the death, and I have undead, and I have these other two armies I'm really interested in at the time. So I come back to AOS, and I see there's three roads before me. And this Mephisto has two roads, because whatever happens, it's a Sunday instead of a Tuesday, and, and I pick my army to start collecting. Or the army that goes up on <laughs> yeah. a Facebook sale for, like, $200 for every model in the range that I found was was a, a death army box from, like, some dude going off to college and he's like i can't take care of my army and i'm like it's mine now i'm, I'm yep, a white home. girl i'm a white girl at a starbucks like just it's mine <laughs> um it, it was uh it, yeah it was just um so i have like two two paths to go yeah um when i came back to aos though i was that close to going clan scryer mm, okay. i was so like dark elves were up in there and that that resonates with like Mephisto stays a um you know like goth kid goth punk kid because I mean like the fucking witch elves hair and, and, like, oh fuck you know, yeah dark, yeah yeah and like fucking malice dark blade he's goth as fuck like mm-hmm. you know like demon it, sword demons, all that stuff. yeah demons all the like heavy metal stuff is still there for 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 dark elves but I'm just kind of going off of like the material of everything yeah. was kind of the same uh, and then I just I turned a different direction. And uh, it's it's got to be Skaven because okay. All right. it was it was I feel like if if we went a little bit more esoteric, I go Dark Elves, you know, because like different things mm, would have been yeah. different. But we just go right. all the way up, materially speaking, to like I get back into AOS, and there was this moment where I'm like, Thief, maybe this the is l- my... least switch flip puts you Skaven. Yeah, this is this is my opportunity because there was that moment there where I'm like, well, this is my like, do I get, do I pick up where I left off and play Death, or do I play something different? And then, like, Clan Scryer, so this was a GHB 2017, and Clan Scryer mm-hmm. was, like, like, because they, they didn't have a book yet, but they were, like, fucking cool. And I'm yeah. like, oh, they're, 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 like, the cool one. They're like, oh, the one I always loved is, is like, still the cool one. Uh, and they don't have a book, because that was really hard for me to wrap my mind around, by the way. It's like, your army doesn't have a book, and I'm like... Yeah, that was, that was definitely a weird time, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so that that was a little like I don't know. That was difficult to wrap my mind around. Um uh but then I was like, Oh, Clan Scryer is like the cool ones. Oh yeah. And like fucking mm-hmm. Storm Fiends and Warlocks and Doom Wheels and yeah. shit. Like it's, it's yeah. I mean that's pretty metal too. So Oh yeah, that's pretty it's pretty badass. And I, okay, and, no, that's and, cool I and I think it gets my it's I have a whimsy about me. I don't know if anyone knows this. Uh they're they're like the dark they're dark whimsy dot army. You know, like, they, yeah. they, you know, they've got that, like, they're dark and they're metal and they're brutal, but there's, like, a whimsy to them, so. It, right. It, yep. uh, yeah. No, that's that's interesting. I keep, like, wanting to propose that question to more and more people just because it's so, it's just so fun. It's it's a nice, like, alleviation, like, you know, like, separate yourself and see what you can do. I, like, I where, where, do you, where do you think your mind would go? Because, like, I, I mean, I, I'll be honest, like, even with Sigmar, like, I, I was a staunch high elf player. Like I never, never foresaw myself falling in love with with Marathi's story and going to where I'm at now. A, a, a perpetual good guy player, like you just like if you play Mass Effect, you're going Paragon, not Renegade. You know, like oh, I I, I do that because I feel bad for the pixels. Um, now that says that says that said, um, what do you mean Marathi's not one of the good good guys? What do you mean? Like I don't See, understand that's, that. That's question. a Mephistoism. You've 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 embraced yep. your. Uh, yep. You've unabashedly embraced your. Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that means how you got to be. Um, I see. I, I like. I could see a year of uh, the first year of Rantcast trying to find this to ask this question and get to the heart of it. There was a period mm-hmm. in there where where I was just, what's the army you love? 
I, I just had this assertion that like everyone has that army. You know? Yeah. And uh, and I found some exceptions to it, but for the most part, it's like you find people who aren't playing their army in Age of Sigmar, and I think that's a little bit of a tragedy. Yeah, yeah and, and and definitely like during the start, like high elves weren't really there, so I played Stormcast. There he is. Because... That's it. Get... Note that he's there. On he the... is. There's he's on the floor. That's my uh my pet rat, uh, Ickit Claw. Nice, Sir Ickit Claw, because I knighted him. Um, mm. and he's on the floor because when I came home from school, I would just let him out the cage. He had his like little tells where he'd want to be on my shoulder, and then you have his moments mm. where I'd set him on the floor. And my grandma, deathly afraid of like rodents, all rodents, even hated rabbits. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh, she liked Ickit because he was like, and her words, he was like a puppy. He That's came cute. when you called him and you go, Ickit. You had to say it kind of like that. And he and you come like running over, scurrying over from wherever he was. He wouldn't really like get lost in the back areas of the house. Like you'd be afraid of for like a hamster or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like he did run along the walls to get where he was going. But then like when he was in the area he was in, he'd like just go and like poke his head around and go do stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, he ruined me from ever owning a rat ever again. I owned one rat after him named Queek. Um, and uh, Queek sucked. Uh, he was <laughs> I, I'm laughing because of the context of the names, honestly. Uh, yeah, I had, like, I'd given him a couple names, but that by that time you're looking at, like, I, I got introduced to Warhammer Fantasy Battles in middle school. Uh, hmm. Sixth grade. Uh, I went, uh, um, so I, I actually, this is the part of the story I usually leave out. Um, so I had a friend uh, that was – my mom uh, had a friend named Tammy uh, when she lived in uh, where my grandma lived in Minnesota. Um, and then my mom had me and my sister Shauna uh, uh, got enamored with a Marine. We were living up around Minneapolis-St. Paul area, and she chased him from Minneapolis-St. Paul with a newborn and me uh, down to North Carolina. And then I grew up in North Carolina for – uh, basically until, you know, uh, in adolescence. Mm -hmm. um, she lost me, Shauna, by then my brother Rafael, to foster care. And my grandma came down from Minnesota and got us out of foster care. So we moved back up to where my mom grew up in Minnesota, which is a place called Winona. Wino punks represent. Um, and, uh, and my grandma hung around Tammy, and so I hung around Tammy's kid. Keith, who was my age. Um, and I think my grandma hung around Tammy because she was like this vestige of my mom. But that's mm. just me going a little psychological. So I'm in sixth grade. Me and Heath have like a literal fist fight on his living room, flo living room floor during a sleepover. And for the first time, like since I'd been back in, uh, in North Carolina, um, I, I have to walk home without getting a ride from Tammy. And I run into my friend Sam, who's like the, the person I talk to in homeroom. Uh, we mm -hmm. sit at the back of the room doing Adam Sandler impressions uh, and uh, quoting SNL skits to each other. And at this time, like Adam Sandler had like the cassettes out, like with the goat. Mm -hmm. ah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, <laughs> like, we're going to the Ragu Festival. And, you know, and he's like, uh, mm -hmm. I told the old man, he was like, he's got this picture of the goat in the, in the fucking uh, roller coaster. He's like, how the fuck do you get in that? And I say, uh, I was superimposed. He goes, what the fuck is superimposed? He's walking away. Like, in, in like, the Adam Sandler. And so we just, Sam and I would quote the shit. Um, and so I run into him walking home. And so I walk home with Sam instead of, like, with Heath one day, right? Because we'd had a fist fight. Um, and uh, so I never want to go to my house. You got to keep in mind because my house sucks. Um and so I, you know, I hang out with Heath's family all day. And so I ended up hanging out with Sam and, you know, just kind of like milling around. And uh, we go up to his room where he's sharing with his brother, Ben. They're like huge long room and they have like bookshelves to divide it into like kind of like two rooms. It's just, mm -hmm. In my mind, it's just yeah. exaggerated into the biggest room ever, by the way. It's like a fucking ballroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Like it's, you know, it's probably small. Um, and he's got a he's got a bookshelf with basically everything I fucking love. He's got Ninja <laughs> Turtles. He's got fucking G.I. Joes. He's got Legos. He's got uh, uh, Palladium Fantasy and Rifts books, RPGs, Teenage Mutant mm -hmm. Ninja Turtles, the RPG, which is like the first thing I grabbed off the shelf. He's got fucking Wolverine comics and X-Men. And then he's got this one shelf, still unpainted High Elves, Warhammer Fantasy <laughs> Battles. 
And if you can remember, like in those days, the fucking the uh, Prince Emmerich, oh. I think his name was. Emmerich. Emmerich. And he's on the mm-hmm. dragon that looks like Violator because he's like an S shape, right? Yep. Yep. And he's sitting up on him. And Sam's got that there. And, and uh, you know, we're talking about all this shit. I'm like, what is this? Because you know, I see a fucking sweet ass dragon mini, you know? And uh, he's got some magic cards scattered on top, too. And mm-hmm. uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, that's Warhammer. I'm like, what the fuck is Warhammer? <laughs> that's a cool name. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck, what the fuck is Warhammer? <laughs> you know, this is like early 90s or, or mid 90s or whatever. And, uh, yeah, we go hang out at a place called Jimmy uh, Jimmy Jams, uh, is the comic book store. Actually, uh, I knew it because I traded uh, basketball cards uh, mm. there, um, and he also sold comics and some other stuff. And uh, in the lapse between my friendship with Heath and Sam, he became like a full nerd store. He got rid of the whole comic book and, or sorry, he got rid of all the like baseball cards, basketball card collections, transitioned into a comic just all book TCGs, store. miniatures, yeah, comi- yeah, minis, D&D, comics, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like everything I loved, <laughs> and even uh, he had a he had his case where he sold all the dice and stuff, and the very very end was this like one case with video games, and, <laughs> and uh, that's how I my video game collection came from either pawn shops. Or the case at the end, uh, in Jimmy Jam, uh, Jimmy Jam's. Nice. Because I would nice. trade. I would trade. Uh, I had credit because all my basketball cards, and I had a bunch of comics from like trading my basketball cards, and so I would trade right. my comics for magic, or whatever. And I had this little economy with Jimmy, um, <laughs> <laughs> of like all my nerd shit, uh, mm-hmm. and like it was all made out of like lawnmower money and like trade. <laughs> yep. 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 Nice. <laughs> It was, it was, the, it was, that was the hub. It was like the, I swear, it, like, you know, if we have phylacteries as humans, you know, like, a, you know, uh, pretend we all live in a fantastical fiction, not like a fiction fiction, right? Where, where like the, the mythologies we tell each other have like some shred of, of like, you know, all the esoterica has some shred of material reality to mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. like you imprint your memories in places you go or, or, uh, um, yeah. you know, whatever, uh, I have a phylactery in, in Jimmy Jam somewhere. It's like a fucking, <laughs> it's like a fucking mem- Memorex memory card, the off-brand non-PlayStation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like it's it just... might be that transparent plastic. It might not. Let's oh see. no, it's gray. It's gray with the plain label that you had to put on yourself. That's how fucking generic oh, it was. And okay. You, and there's like a there's a uh, and my initials uh, are an anor- Andrew. I would draw it as an anarchy symbol, which is part okay. of the reason I thought Skaven were dope as hell. Because it was an upside yeah. down anarchy symbol, uh, but back then I was like a idiot anarchist. I, you know, just all my punk friends. You're a kid. Anarchist. You're a kid. It's fine. They, <laughs> I didn't know that there was like a whole philosophy with like real material like measurements and society. Like I was just like, ooh, fucking mm-hmm. chaos and anarchy. Let's go. <laughs> let's go piss off a teacher today. <laughs> like. <you know? laughs> Yeah, nice. yeah, it was, uh, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I've got a phylactery somewhere there, which is like. Uh, part of my essence just came from that place yep yep i hear that <laughs> it's just uh i i ins i can insert you into that whole thing we had a friend named chris uh who loved final fantasy 6 and earthbound mm-hmm. and uh chris was inexplicably like he was he was like he was like um like he was he was he was um what's the word like not hefty um Stocky. See, he was a, he was a stocky kid, but he just had these like these forearms. He was like just beefy, and I remember nobody fucked with Chris, even though he was a turbo nerd. <laughs> you know, like he was nerdier than me. You know, I kind of kept my nerd on the DL, and like I leaned yeah. into like the alternative kid thing. You know, because I yeah. I moved a bunch, and so I got to be a new kid a bunch. So I just like leaned into that persona a lot, and and I would talk to Sam and Chris. Pope was his last name, by the way. Um, there's a Adam Sandler song. It was a Steve Polychronopolis was in the song. And we used to, uh, Sam and I would recite the lyrics to that song. But anytime you'd have to sing, because my name's Steve, motherfucker, <laughs> Polychronopolis. Um, we would say, because my name's Chris, motherfucker, <laughs> Pope. And we, just, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, just dude, put him in. Yeah, and and I, I could just, I could see you being Chris. <laughs> like the guy, oh, I was a, I was a fat nerd in in 
in school as a kid. It wasn't until like ninth grade when I did something and got in shape. <laughs> no, he was he was again he was stocky. He was he was plump, but he just had these mm-hmm. like fucking forearms that, that just like <laughs> like fucking like you draw a, a teenage mutant ninja turtles cartoon forearms. And so oh no, god, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so nobody fucked with him. Even though he's just this like again, turbo nerd. And he was like in our inner circle, but he wasn't like an alt goth punk kid like 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 He just yeah. liked the same stuff as you guys. He just liked like, the same stuff shit. and so like yeah. and so he hung around with like the punks, but he, he like he'd wear like um uh, not Henleys, but um, polos and like corduroys or like polos and like a pair of like cargo pants or whatever. Just you know, <laughs> never a band T-shirt or a pair of combat boots. Like what the fuck? Um, and he's just like, <laughs> like he's like a uh, uh, in a SLC punk Mike uh, uh, Siegel's character. Uh, like he wears the glasses and he's got like the polo and then just like when they fight Nazis, he just fucking loses his mind and beats. Oh them. Like, yeah, okay, like, yeah, yeah. And like Stevo and 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 Hero and Bob mm-hmm. just like look like punks and then they just have this one like normal dude who wears a polo <laughs> and like khakis and glasses and then loses his shit at the punk show. That was Chris. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's great. <laughs> That's good. And I just I can I can insert you in there because like I can imagine having the the Final Fantasy VI and Earthbound conversations we had with Chris, like sort of mm-hmm. at the right periods where like the wrong friends wouldn't see you and stuff, and and then like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then Chris coming over to hang out at Sam's house after school and because you had like the sort of like school face, and once I got into high school it got way worse. It was to the point where like anyone I knew from the from uh by that time I lived in Green Bay, uh anyone who knew me from Rogue Traders, which was like my main rpg book comic book haunt in green bay and i don't mm-hmm. even know if they're still there anymore we didn't talk to each other at school we, oh, we yeah, were total could, yeah. friends and we we hung out and <laughs> shit like amicable super nice we might like do one of those in the halls didn't sit at the same lunch tables never talk to each other in school <laughs> if it, every now and then you'd do that thing where like if there was a group project and like the the dynamics were breaking down you'd be like oh, i guess we're working together and then like you'd yeah, and that was Fucking like the, a plus done <laughs> yeah and that was the and that was the extent of it, it was, that's cool yeah. yeah i mean that's that's part of the that high school life sometimes well and i hit college and then i realized how much of a fucking nerd i always was i mean that's where it was oh yeah you get to well, you get to college and you're just like oh i could just choose my friends i now. could just be all of it all at yeah. once you know I'm like, oh, look, oh, there's I... someone else who's exactly what I am. Great, let's do it. Oh, I don't have to fucking pretend anymore and like keep these little partitions up around all these like facets of who the fuck I am to like mm-hmm. play face to this person and 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 that person. And you know, I I told Molly when we kind of first met each other, like she doesn't understand the nerd stuff and she doesn't get. Well, she's not a nerd. She was a fucking you know state athlete, tennis player. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my ex girlfriend, golf girlfriends, calls her the supermodel pejoratively um and uh another one calls her super mom and you know on those like weird conversations that come up one night when they text you drunk it's like how do you even get this number oh it's on my facebook shit i, I thought i deleted facebook <laughs> um, you did it's still there though right. <laughs> it's and, forever yeah and and, the, and then like um and so she doesn't get all the like the nerd stuff all the time um uh, but like i never felt the need to like hide it because when when she met me i was just being all of me and she yeah. just kind of like oh, i don't get that but i like all this stuff and you know we hung out for halloween and, and the rest is history there you um, go but i i don't know i don't like gating off who i am i i decided oh yeah yeah like, no i'm I, i'm with you like you come into my house it's like like i have I mean, the, the basement's my area, so that's where my most of my Warhammer stuff's at. That's where my gym's at. Mm-hmm. That's where my office is at. You go upstairs, but like I have my, I have all my trophies from Warhammer in like the dining room curio cabinet. Like we have our Final Fantasy characters in like our our other curio, and then like we have our cosplay weapons from we cosplay hanging on the walls because they're really nicely done. And like it's, I mean, that's that's me and my wife just both were the same. Like we just don't hide it. So like, yeah, I get that entirely. Like, and I get some people if you're more comfortable doing that sure like you do what you need to do well, but like no, man, I, I mean, and I, i'm i'm I, I have there's freedom in being who i am and uh i said i'll be i'll be very clear if you don't like me i don't care <laughs> like that's it I, I i have a similar mentality it's like uh, like I, I just i've been through so much shit you can't even hurt my feelings anymore like there's yeah. nothing anyone can say anywhere that i haven't heard or been through worse 
the, mm-hmm. the worst voice in my head is my own, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> and the worst thing that's ever happened to me came from the one person who was, like, supposed to de facto love me. So you think a stranger on the internet can even touch me? Like, cute. Um, unless you put him in, unless you put everybody else in the circle but him. I'm missing the reference, I'm sorry. Twitter circles. Oh, yeah, that. Sorry, I, I, I did throw that, that back for fun. But that's, that's where, I know, like, I know, it doesn't it's matter. It doesn't the matter. One, it's the one tiny voice yeah, yeah, yeah. like, hey. You don't have any real friends. Nobody put you in your circle. I'm like, shut up. You don't know me. <laughs> you only had 70 people watch your B. Dave Walters episode. You were a loser. No, 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 no. You gotta come out, come out, come out from that. You're fine. <laughs> no, it, it'd be, uh, no, it's, uh, no, it, it's, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I kind of vowed after a certain point. I'm like, I'm never gonna, like, not be me ever again. You know, yeah. it just, I, I, it was, at the one point, I I felt how good it felt to to not have to hide all of these parts of me at all times, and and to like partition off, and it's like, and uh, I'm like, I'm never gonna be made to feel ashamed of what I like. I'm never gonna like entrench my identity in what I like either. Mm-hmm. I know I'm wearing a mask with a Shyishian symbol on it and stuff like that, but like, if you're like Nagash is the worst, I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> you're not, you're not that's, gonna, that's you, fine like i can agree that too yeah sure yeah, yeah no I mean, it, you know it, it that's the thing is like I, but i'm not like like you're not gonna make me feel bad for liking it you know it, yeah. at some point i hit this this like i ran out of fucks to give about what people thought and it was like the most liberating day of my life um it was just loving what you love but then also like recognizing that i was kind of a shit about it growing up i mean like, everyone's a shit growing up right that's it's kind true of, it's that's true. part of growing but up there's yeah. this insecurity in like having to prove that what you like is the best shit ever and that you have the best taste and everybody else has a terrible taste and and like mm-hmm. you have to prove that you're worthy to like this thing or that thing or whatever and, and that whole thing like i just like I, I don't care for that anymore yeah i just you know like if somebody shows up tomorrow and they're like my favorite army in the world is the death army and and i'm like okay which one they're like you know the death army and like and they start doing like the the bad internet thing i'm like let me help you figure out which one you're talking about (laughs) um it's and and then they're like oh yeah i just like this because uh and then just like arbitrary reason i don't agree with and i'm like awesome welcome you know like it's just yeah you know like doesn't matter it doesn't matter and, and, and if they like something i don't like i'm like well what do you like about that oh that's fucking cool too and i just i just I, I would rather help people find what they love and and stoke the fires for them the way when I was young I had these safe places to go to just like mm-hmm. love my shit. Yeah. You know, I had my Jimmy Jams. I had my conversations with Chris and Sam that were mm-hmm. kind of outside our alternative kid crowd like and I always felt the most comfortable in those places and um and and not having to justify it and 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 then kind of that that reinforcement of like Molly's like what are you doing, and I'm like I'm playing a game. First time she saw me, I was sitting. Uh, so we had a she lived a kitty corner from us, a, a half a block away, and she had a mutual friend that lived in the house. It was like a house of like four of us all living together in Milwaukee, and she would come over to do her laundry over by us and like give like twenty bucks to to my friend Keegan who who actually owned the place and we all paid him rent, right. Um, mm. And the first time she met me, I was sitting in the corner playing League of Legends on my uh, 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 Gateway FX laptop. Um, and the second time she saw me was later that day when all the lights had gone off, but I hadn't moved. <laughs> you still play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, what are you? She's like, you're still there. I'm like, uh-huh. And she's like, it's dark now. And I'm like, it got dark. And she's like, why didn't you turn the lights on? I'm like, because it got dark while I was sitting here. <laughs> there is okay this this might be like the last little anecdote before I, I have to head off um it's it's one of those things where it's just like yeah maybe maybe like a core or memory of like why in certain ways i am what i i just am who i am and i'm not going to change that mm-hmm. um unless it's you know unless like it becomes something if where i don't harmful, like and i have to right? change it if it's harmful yeah, it, yeah it's harmful to yeah, yeah. for others you gotta you gotta run some diagnostics right, right right but like just like if you're not I, hurting I, anybody love your shit right like right love your shit be honest sometimes be blunt it hurts but i was 
it was dating this girl in, in high school and it's probably about a year and like you know everything's going good and i was playing final fantasy i think nine it doesn't matter i, was, I know i was playing a final fantasy at least or I, i'm playing a video game at least let's say that because the whole memory thing like, yeah yeah was, right yeah we don't know it's a video i feel game. it was final fantasy nine um and she and she was like two years older than me and she's about like to go to college and all that sort of stuff or be something yeah, somewhere around there and she just says you know someday in the future you're gonna have to stop playing video games and you know like focus on what it is to be like an adult and take care of the household and stuff without missing a beat and i kept staring at the screen and playing my games i just blurted out i don't think this relationship's gonna work out <laughs> like i was just like that's like one of like that's like one of the moments where i was just like and like then there was like that chill because I realized what I just fucking said. <laughs> and then there's the air part of me that says, no, you said that without thinking, which means that's the most truthful thing you've probably said today. <laughs> yes. And, and no. then so, it depends on where it comes from. But yeah, yes. And well, no. yeah. But like the more I thought about it and like that relationship was over after, not too long after that, but like probably actually for the best. And yeah, she went a little crazy near that end. And it was like, okay, but like, yeah, it was like still it was one of those things like, no, it's like, I'm just going to keep doing what I am. <laughs> Well, the, the ultimate irony is now, like, there's fucking jobs that exist just playing video games for really real as a professional. And, oh, like, yeah. You know, yeah. it's just like, you suck it, Mom. I wasn't wrong for wanting to get into games. You were wrong for not letting me get into games harder earlier. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> t- <laughs> no, the problem, problem was lack of uh, ability to hold a stream on my own. <laughs> That's my issue. <laughs> uh, I, love, anyway. I love streaming. All right, man. Yeah. I am going. I haven't done my sign off in a in a long time. Final soapbox. What is it? Okay. Well, two very important things. One, I I want to encourage everybody to, like I said, look into taking care of your physical health because it does help your mental health in its own way. Even if it's just because your walking. mental health is physical, that your brain and body. They're... Yep. Yep. So. It, like I say, don't, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna push. I don't care if you follow me to do it. Just I, I hope everyone gets movement every day. Hydrate. Try to eat less processed. Eat more whole food um, as you can. And you know, three at least three times a week, go for like an hour walk or to the gym, whatever you can afford, however you can do it. Just make make yourself healthier is always a good thing. And the second thing I leave off is I hope everyone's excited for October twenty first. Taylor Swift's new album, Midnight. Pre- you can pre-order it now. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I'm just going to say thank you so much for helping me uh, uh, this Meftober. The the greatest holiday, really, one might say. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Thanks for coming on the show, my friend. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, and chat gang, you know this part. Y- you haven't forgotten it in two months, have you? You're the show within the show, the reason we do this thing. Remember to drink your milk, pay your taxes, and be excellent to each other. We'll catch you next time.